for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. To Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Good evening. Fade to Black. Bespoke radio for the masses. <laughs> yeah, man. Today's Wednesday, December 27th, 361 days into the new year, just four days left. We are live from a bunker somewhere in downtown Burbank, California, and I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States. Hither and hither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south. Far and near, this is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and KGRA, the planet. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? How you doing? We're at the end of the year. Can't believe it. We got here somehow. It was a crazy year. And tonight, very special guest, radio host Lisa Gar is here. We're going to talk about being awake and aware in 2018. She's the best. Can't believe it. This is it. Tomorrow night's our last show of the year. Falls on a fader night. No more fun than that, right? We're going to have uh, John Rappaport here with his No More Fake Newsroom Live, followed by open lines all night long. We want to hear from you and our special guest tomorrow night taking your calls with me will be astrologer Jeff Harmon, we're going to take a look at uh, 2018, make some predictions, do some little astrology live on the air, take your phone calls, have some fun, do a, uh, you know, end of the year special event tomorrow. And then we roll into the weekend. Uh, Friday night, I am over at uh, Coast to Coast AM. My guest will be Richard Dolan, followed by open lines all night long. Okay, so two nights of open lines over at uh, coast i'm gonna i think i'm gonna have uh, Stephen bassett over there too for a little bit uh to help me open up the show okay so that will be uh this week over at uh, coast and then we come back home and get ready for the new year's eve party yeah did you get your invite <laughs> uh, did you get your invite you know you want one I think next year, I'm going to make this announcement with Rita. This is what I want to do next year for New Year's. I I want your opinion on this. Oh, by the way, and then uh, we also have the the next podcast star announcement, too, as well. we got to handle that, too. Oh, man, and we've got it down to a few finalists. We've got to make a decision here. And I guess uh, we'll try to find a way to make that announcement, hopefully, tomorrow night. I guess we have to. It's the end of the year. Okay. So um, this next year on New Year's, Rita, we should have a contest next year. And we should, like, fly in a fade or not from around the country to come over and do New Year's with us. And we should have some crazy contest. Yeah, I think we should. Rita, what do you think about that idea? Let's see what Rita has to say. In... <laughs> She's going to be texting me in about two seconds. Are you out of your cotton pick in mind? But I think that's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. We should just have a big contest, 
and uh, and fly somebody in for our New Year's Eve bash. What do you guys think about that? And if we um, if we do that, how do we do that kind of contest? Hmm. Need to think about that one. But that would be so much fun. Some lucky fate or not. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, so tomorrow night's open lines, and uh, Lisa Gar is here with us tonight. You can follow us on Twitter at J Church Radio at J Church Radio on Twitter. Use hashtag F two B for the sandbox. New Year's is midweek next year. Is it midweek? How how is it midweek? If it's if New Year's Eve, what is New Year's Eve on this year? It's Sunday, right? Right? Isn't that New Year's Eve? 29th, 30th, 31st. So then next year it's on Monday and Tuesday. So what's the difference? It's a four-day weekend. Somebody can fly in. I mean, you know, Paula, what if you won? I think you would be here, right? Well, and you know what else? I'll be honest with you. Midweek, uh, any, <laughs> it doesn't matter for us. That's a good reason to throw a party. All right. Uh, follow us on Twitter at JChurch Radio. Hashtag F2B is the sandbox. Come and hang out with us over there. We do two, three, four thousand tweets a night. Come over and join in the conversation. The chat rooms are open over in Spreaker and KGRA the Planet. And uh, there you go. Let's uh, let's get this thing started tonight. You can also email Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Okay. Coming up in February, Lisa Gar, our guest tonight, will be there. The Conscious Life Expo, February 9th through the 12th, 2018, at the LAX Hilton. Tickets and info over at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Click on the banner right there, and it'll take you uh, to their website where tickets, info, all of the presentations and panels, everything is up there. I'll be hosting uh, Friday night over there the Ancient Aliens panel, and my guests will be David Wilcock, Corey Good, Linda Moulton Howe, William Henry, and Jay Widener. All stars of Ancient Aliens all have their own shows over at Gaia. So there you go. That'll be the Ancient Aliens panel Friday night in the Plaza Ballroom at the LAX Hilton. Okay, so we'll see all of you fader knots there. Man, I can't believe it. This is it. It's tonight and tomorrow night. And these are our last two shows of the year. Unbelievable. Unbelievable year. Uh, you can also subscribe to our podcast, help support the show. We have over 775 archive shows right there. Custom apps, Apple, Android, all platforms, just $2 per month. Okay, best deal in all of the Internet. You can also become a fade or not. Go to our membership section on the site. Again, help support the show. Okay, where are you going to get the bunker cam? Hey, what's up, everybody? You can even get commercial-free downloadable archives updated every single day. And if you get the Game Changer, you can even get your fade to black gear. That's right. And when you get your fade to black gear, take a picture, send it in. We'll make you famous. All right, don't forget all of our sponsors here. Life Change Tea, GetTheTea.com, River Moon Coffee, New Pharma, Ancient Life Oil, Sacred Skulls, New Mana Food Storage, and, of course, Bearing Optics Night Vision, so you can go and see your very own green chrome balls. Let's get this show cracking. Our dead guy's birthday today, Heather O'Rourke, 1975 to 1988, died at the age of 12. She was the actress who starred as Carol Ann Freeling in Poltergeist. Yeah, and its sequels. One of the most quoted lines in cinema history with, They're here. Tragically died at the age of 12 during surgery in 1988 after being misdiagnosed with Crohn's disease. They tried to save her. They even put her on a helicopter, flew her down to San Diego, but she died at the age of 12. Happy birthday, Heather. On this day in history, OTD. 1968, Apollo 8, allegedly the first manned mission to the moon, re returned safely to Earth after its six-day journey and ten orbits around the moon, and they were able to see the dark side of the moon for the first time. What did they see? Well, they didn't say much. Fatered fact, in the U.S., okay, now listen to me. In the United States, the death toll from guns 
is higher for kids aged 0 to 4 than it is for on-duty law enforcement officers. And that is a fader fact. All right, tonight, very special guest radio host Lisa Gar is here. She is a guest host with me, of course, over at Coast to Coast. She has her The Aware Show. Um, millions listen to her every single month, and it's going to be great. She's always awesome when she's on with us, and she will also be over at the Conscious Life Expo with us this year, too, as well. Tomorrow night, another fader night, but it's our last show of the year. We're going to have the No More Fake News Room with John Rappaport, followed by Open Lines with our very special guest tomorrow night, astrologer Jeff Harmon. Okay, now, <clears throat> two shows left. Four days left in the year. What a memorable year it was, right? And off of the top of my head, I did not do a Google search for the top stories of 2017. You almost needed that, though. Um, and what were the biggest stories? And some might say politics. Don't do politics on this show. Gave that one up. Politics for a show like this is called Divide and Conquer. And this audience is on a united front for all things conspiracy. And what's under the conspiracy banner? The conspiracy umbrella. The conspiracy banner. What's underneath that? Well, of course, we have UFOs. We have things like the easy stuff like JFK, Gulf of Tonkin, right? But also education, uh, lost history, Egypt, the banking system, the Fed, uh, near-death experiences, ghost, Bigfoot, cryptozoology. Um, I can go on and on. All of those things fall under the conspiracy banner. And this year, um, with politics doing what it did, uh politics was very successful at dividing the country like it's never been divided before it's always been red and blue right but this year it divided things so much so that you cannot say anything you can't if you are uh, uh an a, a, a right or a left show or whatever then you pick your sides, and that's your audience, and that's what comes, you know, and that's what's there. Here, it's all over the place. So mentioning politics on the show divides this audience. I don't dig that. And so, and I found out the hard way. You go and you pick sides, or you mention anything you mention, and, and all of a sudden, this audience is fighting amongst itself. <laughs> and we don't need that here. We know we got enough stuff to worry about, right? But some might say politics, right? And if you take a look back, then there's things inside of that, like Obamacare. Yeah, it was a big story, of course. Taxes uh, towards the end of the year became a big deal. North Korea this year was a big story all year long. And we also had the revolving doors of Washington falls under politics, but it's not only that it's, it's, you know, the fed in general and judges and, and senators and congressmen and representatives and, and, you know, uh, heads of different departments. It, it was just absolutely crazy. The revolving door uh, that is Washington. I've never seen, I, I just don't remember anything like that before. And then you could throw in things like Russia, Russia being such uh, a part of our lives this year. Always Russia was always like hanging over our heads, but we still did our own thing over here. And and Russia was always an afterthought. You know, it just wasn't on the front page. Not, you know, some might say Russia was the biggest story this year or Putin. And then after you get through all of that, all of that craziness. In 2017, then we have sex. Sex might have been the biggest story. And I'm not talking Monica. I'm talking about sex may have been the biggest story this year. And just as you start to go, yeah, I, I guess that, that could be, right? 
Yeah, sex may have overshadowed politics and Obamacare taxes and North Korea and, and nuclear bombs and and uh, missiles and crazing and Russia and Crimea, right? Sex. But then there's racism. Did racism trump sex? Did it? Because... I need you guys to just sit back and understand what I'm talking about here. Remember all of those white supremacist rallies? Remember that? Remember that Camaro or Firebird or whatever that was? Plymouth Barracuda, whatever that was. You know, running down a protester. So, killing. Uh, we have that. All of the the uh, the monuments in the South and cities in an uproar and that was in the south we had it all over the country it wasn't just there you know all all of the cities northwest northeast craziness racism 2017 is a year we'll never forget it's one of those things we're going to go along we're going to get through 2018 where there's big things ahead and and normally you forget about the previous year But I didn't even mention the weather. The weather. Could the weather have been the biggest story of 2017? We had like 150 hurricanes. You know, Texas, Houston, right? Florida, uh, the Caribbean, pummeled by one hurricane after another. You know, Puerto Rico still without electricity. And think about what they're dealing with still right now in the Florida Keys and up and down the coast there in Florida. Think about that. How 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 do we get through this, these thoughts? And I didn't even mention ISIS. And the other funny thing when it comes to ISIS, I don't know if you even <clears throat> noticed, excuse me, in the headlines, was that ISIS allegedly, has been defeated in Syria. That now they, you know, Russia says that Syria now occupies 100% of the country. The United States is saying 98%, but that it's mission accomplished. Everything is done over there. How, how did that not become headline news? We, we got so acclimated with these news stories and these headlines all year in 2017, getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and more sensational, and they were big. Okay, we had we had indictments and and firings and and Senate hearings and craziness and investigations one after another, going all the way back to you know the email question came back you know and so, so, so headlines that were so big. And I'm talking about with racism and sex and Putin and Russia that um, the email question and ISIS barely got mentioned. Barely got mentioned. All of this uproar about bombing ISIS and beheadings and entire cities being bombed and liberated and uh, everything that went down over there, it didn't get mentioned. And it was right at the end of the year. Pretty strange, isn't it? But the list, when we get to the sex section, and this is what is crazy, the year started off with Bill O'Reilly, you know, and as the year went along, Bill O'Reilly, I don't know if you realize this, but Bill O'Reilly is not on Fox anymore. (laughs) How is that possible? Kevin Spacey, Matt Lauer, Charlie Rose, Bill Cosby, Garrison Keillor, C.K. Lewis, who seemed to get a pass card on this whole thing. Nobody's talking about C.K. Jeffrey Tambor, Al Franken, Russell Simmons, Tavis Smiley, Dustin Hoffman. Partial list all year long, right? And I'm going to be straight. That's not the biggest news story of the year. Everything that I mentioned, everything, Kevin Spacey and Bill Lauer. I mean, Matt Lauer and Bill O'Reilly sitting right there. To, to, and, and they're not the biggest news of the year. Not even close. Nope. The biggest news event of the year happened on December 16th, 2017. 
And looking back at 2017, as we go into 2018 and the, the things that are about to happen and continue to happen will, will cause 2017 to be the year to remember. Ten years from now, we are going to look back at 2017 about what a crazy year it was. Yes, with the weather, with Russia, Russia Gate, and uh, and and Putin, and and the politics, and Trump's first year. These are all big, big deals, right? New taxes coming in, and all I did, just in the weather and and disclosure that actually happened in 2017. I have been looking at uh, throughout the day. I spent my time poking around, looking at some of the, I almost want to say all of it, but I didn't quite get there. Some of the criticisms of disclosure and some people saying out there that it's not even close. It's not even close. And my reaction to that is those that are saying that haven't gone and and looked at the layers that we're dealing with here, what happened last week on Saturday. It is such a big deal. But those those that are saying, ah, it's not disclosed, ah, no, they don't get it. December 16th, 2017 was a huge day, a huge day. And um, when I see somebody say, well, you know what, it's not enough. We need more. You know, I don't know, and this is where my blood gets a little bit heated. I don't know what it is that those expect. And and this is what I think. They're trolling. Yeah. Yeah, they're trolling. They are trying to make themselves significant. That's what's going on. I don't want to hear. I've gotten so much email. Jimmy, man, you, you need to hear all sides. It's 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 not, you, you know, you're, you're, you, stop with that frame of mind. I know exactly what I'm seeing. I know exactly what I'm saying. I know exactly what happened. It was a big, big, big effing deal. And to say that it wasn't enough, what is it that, you know, that you want us to react to? It's a troll comment. It's a comment trying to get people to respond to their comment. Oh, yeah, you're right. It wasn't enough. Oh, no, you're wrong. It, it, that's what it is. It's trolling. Trolling. And I don't care. I don't care. Anybody listen to my voice right now and say, hey, man, but, but what about this guy? He just said, you know what? That guy that is criticizing what happened last Tuesday I mean, last Saturday is trolling, trying to make the trying to stay in the game. You know, there's that part, and then we have the the insiders in our community, the the fans of this show, you know, or the ones that listen to the show or other shows, and they're part of the community that are saying these things. It's trolling. There needs to be one thing happening here, and that is, and it's very simple. Be happy. Glow. Whatever happened, happened, and let's figure out how we are going to move forward. We got videotape out of the Pentagon. We got confirmation of a secret UFO program in the Pentagon. We have a pilot going on the record. We have his wingman going on the record. We have Luis Elizondo going on the record. All on the record, we know that Senator Harry Reid, that you have to understand who Harry Reid was at that time, the Senate Majority Leader funding a secret UFO program. How much big news do you need to knock you in the head? The answer is it doesn't get none bigger. You are just trying to troll. (laughs) That's it. I don't pay attention to it. It's negativity. I am happy. I cannot believe that went down. As it, it, as it continued, and uh, I thought the, the New York Times, for myself, 
we could just pull back right there and go, wow, okay, there, there it is. We can, we can, we can run. This is great. And it went from there all the way across the board in mainstream media. And it stayed there for a week straight. It is hard to keep a story in the news for a week straight. That's how big this is. Now, where do we go from here? Now, I, I, I stated last night, and as we go into 2018, this is what I ask from this audience. This is what I ask from the researchers out there, those that are listening right now, and they all are. Each of you has a little taste of something that is in your expertise, that is in your wheelhouse. So let's go. That's how we move forward. Let's find out about this warehouse. Let's find out about this government program. Last night on the show, Stephen Bassett said it was $22 million over five years. And right after he said that, I got like five emails today. No, it's $22 million a year. So I don't know. So let's go find out. Let's go find out. Let's continue the analysis of this video. I don't, there's no debunking of the video. I want to know what that, how that ship was traveling. I need to, I need that broken down. I want to know the airspeed of that ship. I want to, I want to know it. There, there is a direction that the, this craft is flying in and you can see the clouds moving in the background. I want to know what was the airspeed at that point? I want to know these things. Okay, now getting Dave Fravor on the show, you know that's going to happen, and we're working on that, and that's not that big of a deal. He's had a busy week, um, but we're going to have Fravor on this show. Of course, we're going to have Luis Elizondo on this show. You know, we're going to have DeLong back. We're going to do all of that. There's, I, I really want uh, Steve Justice on the show uh, from Skunk Works. I want that, too. And there are others out there that um, uh, uh, are – researchers that can help break down each element of everything that we are dealing with. I want to know about the CIA. I want to know about the Pentagon and and how that is running. There is so much information here with this, with this disclosure that happened last Saturday that we have so much work to do in 2018. And that is the truth. That is the biggest story of 2017. It doesn't get any bigger. As big of a news year as it was, and it was huge. And I talked about that every single day on this show. How are we going to top the headlines? How do we top the headlines from the day before? You don't remember the headlines from last week. I had no idea that this was going to get dropped on December 16th, 2017. This is Fade to Black, our second to last show of the year tonight. Lisa Gar is with us tomorrow night, Fader Night, our last show of the year. We're going to have astrologer Jeff Harmon in here and, of course, John Rappaport. So I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be right back with Lisa Gar of The Aware Show. She also a guest host with me over at Coast to Coast. Great voice, great mind, and she's going to help us how to stay awake and aware in 2018. On the Game Changer Network and KGRA The Planet, I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. I'll be right back. Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. KGRA Radio. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of Fade to Black. You create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the Fade to Black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of Fade to Black. 
The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Go Beckley Tepe. Natural Health Solutions with Chris and Ronnie. Hey, Ronnie. How you doing? Great, Chris. Now, you're the CEO of GetTheTea.com, right? Yes, I am. What is GetTheTea.com? I mean, is this tea you buy in a store? Well, no, it's not. Life Change Tea is just that, life-changing. Life Change Tea is an herbal tea that gently cleanses your body from intruders. What do you mean by intruders? Well, intruders are toxins, chemicals, GMOs, heavy metals, and more. They're in our food, in our water, in our air we breathe. Seriously? Yeah, seriously. And Life Change Tea will help you with removing these, as you say, intruders? That's right, Chris. Are there side effects with this tea? Well, you might lose a little weight. When you clean your colon, you lose weight, you feel better, and you have more energy. Wow. Ronnie, where can people purchase Life Change Tea? Oh, that's easy. Get the tea dot com. That's get the tea, T-E-A dot com. Ronnie, I want to thank you for being on the show. People, don't forget, get the tea, T-E-A dot com. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show. On the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA. The planet. Win big with KGRA this summer. Tickets and hotel accommodations to the biggest conferences, autographed books and DVDs, chances to win all inclusive conference cruises, and private dinners with your favorite KGRA hosts. Click the contest tab at KGRARadio.com for your chance to win big this summer. Your contact for the best alternative talk radio on the planet. KGRARadio.com. This is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Massey, and you're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Lisa Gar is here. <laughs> yeah, man. And this segment of Fade to Black is proudly brought to you by Life Change Tea. Starting with their Super Strength Tea, we use Life Change Tea products every day, including Coral Sea, GI Joy, Pine Bark, Moringa Drops. I do it all every day. And I'm never sick. I feel great. Just use the promo code FADER. That's all you got to do. Promo code FADER. Click on the banners over at JimmyChurchRadio.com. You're going to get yourself some free shipping. Why? Because you know somebody. And I know Lisa Gar. Since 1999, she has hosted uh, that popular program over at Pacifica Radio Network called The Aware Show. Based on her desire to live in a more conscious world, Lisa created The Aware Show to feature best-selling authors and experts in the fields of natural health, cutting-edge science, personal growth, and, of course, spirituality. With a background in the healing arts, she is considered an expert herself in the field of lifestyle and transformational media programming. In addition, she comes from a long line of entertainers, including her aunt, actress Terry Gar, and her grandmother, Phyllis Gar, an original Radio City Music Hall Rockette. Lisa also hosts a show called Hay House Radio, called Being Aware, and a series uh, for Gaim TV, which is called Gaim Inspirations. And she's a regular host with me over at Coast to Coast AM, syndicated on over 500 stations around the world. She has one of the largest series on the Internet, too. Combined, she reaches millions of listeners globally every month. And I would like to welcome back to Fade to Black, Lisa Gar. Lisa, good evening. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you so much for having me back on. I love it. Millions and millions of listeners. 
<laughs> now, I want to ask you this, uh, Lisa, and and thank you uh, for coming in. You know, after uh, the holidays and heading into New Year's, you know, thank you for doing this for the audience. But um, do you, you know you've been at this now for eighteen years, nineteen ninety nine? Uh, do you feel pressure? You know, you have a very large audience. You know, do you feel that? Do you feel the pressure to to deliver? Never, 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 because it is, I, I never set out to be a broadcaster, even though I happened to have, you know, went to USC as, and I, and I got my degree in broadcast journalism. I never set out to be a broadcaster. I just thought it wasn't a great idea to graduate with a degree in acting. <laughs> so I, I decided to, you know, to go to Annenberg and had amazing teachers, but I, I started the radio show because of a near-death experience I had that I wrote about in my book, and it was an experience that was so life-changing, as many are, and I'm so grateful for all of the research that's come out these days about near-death experiences and where everything that's described is everything that I experienced, everything Raymond Moody speaks about and, and Evan Alexander and all these incredible people it changes your life. There's, you know, the IAMS Institute. There's a whole association that's 50 years old that's talk, that studies the research of near-death experiences. And they really change people completely. It's not just a dream. It cellularly changes your life. It's like you cannot unsee it ever. You cannot unexperience it. So... Many of us that have the experience of and and remember finally the experience of of um, almost dying and seeing what you see is more vivid than anything you physically see because your mind's eye is so it's so indelible to me it changes your life it can't not change your life and that's why I started the show was because I needed to talk about it I needed to tell people what I saw what possible, what's out there, and all of these great things that we hear all day long about the, you know, see things how you want them to be, or even talking about aliens, they're all there for a reason, because they exist in other dimensions, other levels. Where I went was so real and so clear to me that it was an experience that was just way beyond this time. So that's why I started. Pressure, no, has nothing to do with that. It just has to do with communication and what I want to share and amazing people out there that we interview and you and just, in, you know, the incredibleness of, of bringing about these messages that change people's lives. It, it, no, but, no. but it seems to me that it was destiny, and you may not have even known it, uh, you know, I'm t- I'm talking about spreading of the knowledge through the Aware Show and your voice. And I've spoken to you about this before, but you have the radio voice, right? You have this perfect thing, this this vehicle, this instrument to deliver the message. Did you have the voice as a young girl? Did you have that that tone, or did did you just chain smoke cigarettes and drank a lot no. of whiskey? I, you know, <laughs> no, I. You know, I was in musical theater for a while, so I like to sing, but I never had any. I, this has been my voice forever. See, it was it's, destiny. See, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it was destiny. Thank you. I, I don't know how to sit. I'm blushing. Well, no, you don't have to blush. Uh, I remember uh, Rita and I, we were uh, we just finished uh, Fade to Black, and we're in the car. And, uh, and we turn on Coast, and you're there. You're hosting. And I turned to Rita, and I turned up the radio. I said, "Listen to Lisa's voice. Just listen to that voice. She's, you know, you've got you've got the instrument to speak to the masses with." And so, congratulations! It, it's destiny, though. And when you look at synchronicities, as you do, and spirituality, it was your path. Did you ever try to fight it, or did you go with it? Mm. Great question. Yeah, as the years go on, and the you know the what amounts to bringing about a show to the millions of people a month, it requires a lot. It's a lot of work. I mean, it's 
twenty four seven. You, uh, we were talking about this earlier. You know, the back end of everything and providing the content for people so that they can have access to it after it's live and the members and what that means to people and connection with people and yeah, it's it gets to be a lot and. I've learned throughout the years, I, originally, you know, I told you I, I came about this because I wanted to communicate this incredible experience of mine and all the people out there who are ta- talking about the same thing. And then there was the Internet, and so we brought everything online, and then we became basically not Internet marketers, but essentially putting our whole life online, and that was a learning curve for me. That was a big learning curve for me. And so, yes, I have – those are the challenges, but I never – Never even thought about stopping ever. I I never want to. I I will always. You know why? Because this show is a healing for me. It's a healing for me every single day. I do it. Just as what you do is, you just have this insatiable curiosity and thirst for the information that you talk about. You can't not do it, right? Can you right. imagine? No. What would you do? No, no I could not <laughs> right. imagine. <laughs> <laughs> you just read and research and talk to your friends about it, right? You know, same thing you're doing on the air. It is so yeah. funny. Um, I remember Lisa back in the early '90s uh, when Coast to Coast kicked off, and I lived across the street from Coast at the time. I didn't know Coast was across the street. Oh, really? From me and in Sherman, Sherman Oaks. Oaks? Yeah, yeah. I lived right there on, on Dickens. So anyway, um, but I found Coast in my car. So I go out and I buy a radio for my nightstand so I could listen to Coast. And I'm trying to find it, you know, and I, I find And the reception wasn't that good. So I went back out and got another AM, you know, I exchanged it, brought it back. Ah, now I got the reception. So I'm listening to Coast all night. And this is what I was. Then I found out when they gave in the call in numbers, I was like, Wait, what? What? 818 501. That's my <laughs> phone number. And my phone number was one digit off from the coast numbers. What? Yeah. And so (laughs) I I thought it's got to be close. And then I found out it was across the street. But my point is this. As I listened to coast and really got into talk radio and started listening to it, I thought to myself, it feels like everybody's holding back. Right? And if I was in a position to host the show, I would ask different questions i i just felt like you know you know and i I wasn't getting what i wanted out of it and Mm. so yeah was you know so uh, could i imagine myself doing something different i've been planning this for a long time you You have you launched that rocket of desire a long time ago right isn't that interesting and Mm -hmm. it's it that's the most important part now now i want to pick your brain so let me do this host to host here wow did i just say that i love it i just said it (laughs) um there are a few things that you do deal with um i'm always uh conscious about uh dividing my audience right and trying to you know trying to steer this ship where i'm not getting the audience you know, upset, but there's a few zones I, I, I try to avoid. And one of them is religion. And for you with a near death experience and spirituality, religion comes into play for your audience and for you. So how do you deal with that without upsetting the apple cart? Almost everyone I've ever interviewed speaks about spirituality instead of religion, because it's a oneness, universal, all all one God. I mean, every single religion, their basis is a belief in in something bigger than themselves. The universal themes of religion are the same exact themes of what you would call spirituality. It's community. It's a large group of people believing the same way you do. It's being part of a whole. It's It's being... A, a part of something that's much bigger than you, that's a movement. I mean, you could pretty much slap those guidelines on everything. You could put that onto politics. You could put that onto um, sports teams. I mean, you, you could do that. It's all, it's belief system. It's all belief system. So there's, there's that that connects us all is really what we believe in. Religion, you could call as a group of people that are connected to the same set of beliefs, 
Same thing with politics. Same thing with the sports team. Same thing with all of those. Is it's connected to something bigger and greater than us. Um, my one of my main mentors in my life, who I adore, is Wayne Dyer, and he wrote the forward to my book. And he and I were good friends, and I still. I still feel his presence and get communication from him all the time because these thoughts, there's no way they could come from me. But he used to say a lot before he passed, a lot of his end, his uh, talks on stage were all about, I am God. And he came on my radio show once and he was talking about this, preaching about this, I am God, you are God. And he lit up my listeners. I mean, people were like, who is this guy saying he's God? How mm-hmm. blasphemous? How could this person come on? Right. Full conviction. And I later understood what he was talking about after he passed. Because as I was um, attempting to connect with him and say, where are you? And what what do you see now? Or where are you? Or where, where, is, where are you in this universal soup, in this cosmic soup? And I got this loud, ringing voice in my ear saying, I am God. No way. I promise you. Most of the communication happens on my mountain bike. But I I got this universal message of, of, don't, you know, don't look for me. I, God is in all things. I am God. There's a universal sense of cosmic connection that we are all a part of. No one is separate from that. And you could, you could even take something like, and I'm going to go here, um, the people who are for and against gun ownership. Again, the same overarching conversation there, there's one connection between both sides, and it is safety. You can find one thing that connects polar opposites in, amongst most arguments and most conversations it's fascinating because you know people in the in the the gun activism and so forth they are each saying the same thing i want safety and i found this out of one of the shows that i hosted on coast and it was right after the nightclub shooting in florida and i had marianne williamson on and she was talking about her new book that was um tragedy to triumph she was talking about how she um had lost the congressional election and it was a dark, dark time in her life. And the book is really beautiful. It's about um, going through the dark night of the soul and what it really brings out in you. And then she said, and those people who shot, they shouldn't have had those guns. Every line on the coast, um, you know, the lines just lit up like a Christmas tree, Jimmy. And Tina and I are sitting in the studio going, what just happened? And I didn't know what she had said. I didn't catch that she had talked about the rounds and the specific thing about the specific guns. And I realized that I was in the middle of a war of people that were really angry about what she said. And I started to mention, because we were really talking about healing. We were talking about beginning the healing of this mass shooting that Mm -hmm. had happened. Mm -hmm. And I realized that Everyone who's calling in that was so passionate about their rights to own arms were just as passionate about their feelings of the people that had died and the remorse that the nation was having around that. And it was a universal overarching theme of, of connection. And it was it, so in your law, that's a long, long answer to your question about dividing and so forth but it really if you look deeply at everything it's the same tone and it could you could find a a common thread in most opposing arguments that that is part of the talent of being a host you know there's that part and then you have to fight the inner self of your own opinion Right. And so you have you you have your responsibility to the audience and then you've got your own opinion. And in most cases, your opinion doesn't really matter. No, uh -uh, no, no, no. Right. No. And that's when, you know, the ego needs to get kind of checked because that's where an agenda would come in. If you have an agenda about it to hosts, don't do that. (laughs) 
we we never needed to have agendas because it doesn't make sense for what we do. We have this great responsibility and this honor and this privilege to be on the airwaves. Wow, I mean, what an honor. What an honor. And who are we to ever have an agenda around that? I'm personally, this is how I feel. I feel I am honored to be in the space of somebody's listening. And in that space, in that space of honor, I get to bring about the opinions of my guests and the listeners as they call in and provide a forum to have a healthy communication. One of the messages that came in from my near-death experience, I had a whole dream about this. It was a train. It was a locomotive train, and it was very coming from somewhere. It was coming from a very long, eternal place, and it was going somewhere, too. It was never stopping, and this train had the word aware on the outside of it, and inside of it were these audio control boards and monitors, and it was a very high-tech studio inside the train, and then outside the train had this word aware and this tagline that I will always, always remember, communicating messages that inspire positive growth and change. And that's the responsibility I have. Now, to communicate the messages. Right. Now now uh now you get now you get the chance to interject your opinions because the uh the responsibility that you have with the listener is great but then you have somebody called you up that is in need in thirst of information and that caller says to you and i'm sure that this has happened uh, uh did you see when you when you had your near death experience lisa did you see god you know what what did he look like did you you know did you talk to jesus you know because i i had mine and he wasn't there and i'm wondering now what is really going now you're stuck <laughs> right now you're stuck right. you, you you cannot give the right answer here what do you do well, I always go back to what is the person that's calling really, really need? Like, what do they really want? Do they really want to find their own truth? Do they really want my experience? What do they really want? And I would just go back to the need of the listener. I find myself saying that all the time. So what exactly is your question? And then I get a long story, but then I say, well, what, what is your question? What is it that you want to know? And if I can really get to the depth of what someone's question really is, then I have I understand who that person is, and I have their listening, and I'm listening to them, and and it creates a relationship with that person. I don't usually create controversy unless you know someone really wants to come on and say, "All right, I disagree," and everybody's entitled to their opinion. But I love listening to people's opinions. Sometimes I, I have had people, "Oh yeah." Of <laughs> um, all people, I had this amazing guest on just a couple of days ago, John Gray. John Gray, John Martinez, Gray's great. Author, amazing, right? Absolutely. He started talking about women in sexual harassment situations, accident in the Harvey Weinstein case, accidentally finding themselves in Harvey Weinstein's bedroom, and he said, "How and why? What were they doing there? What was their level of responsibility?" with being there. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. John Gray. I'm a woman. Oh, <laughs> and John, he's saying John. this on my show, and I'm like, hold up. I love you, John. I love you so much. But you can't say that. Did How you do we really know that say that? wasn't called office? Did How you, you know say that? that? You said that to John Gray. Yes. <laughs> Good for you. I mean, I know how these situations were. How do you know that the office door didn't say office, and when you walked in, there was a bed? I mean, how do you not, I mean, how, you don't know the situation. You can't really say, how did these women wind up in the bedroom? You don't know the situation. You can't say that on the air. You can't say that wow. to a female host with a female listener, not female, but, uh, you know, there's 40% out there who are yes. probably women. No, you're right. You're right about yeah. that. And see, th there's something else. I don't want to get off into this sexual thing, and neither do you. But there, John Gray is also old school. 
And so, if you know what I mean, and the there's two kind of um, aspects to all of these sexual allegations. There's the new ones, like with, you know, modern day situations with Harvey Weinstein and all of that is creepy and wrong. And that's it. He knew you should know better. This is a different world that we live in. And then there's the world of the 70s. And John Gray, by saying that, he's like coming from that 70s mindset. No, no, no. He redeemed himself completely. I said, John, what do you mean? I said, you can't give that responsibility. He said, no, that's what I'm saying. And he said, he said that everyone has to take responsibility for their situations. And he went to it on a chemical level. He's, he's actually very, I mean, he's, I've always loved John and he is, has a great way of explaining things. I just didn't get it when he said that. I didn't and he get pissed it. off my listeners. Oh, and right. so then I called him on it because I'm not a Pollyanna host by all means. Right. And I called him on it and I said, look, that we got to back up here. That didn't make sense. You can't say that. And then he said, no, I agree with you. What I'm saying is, and then he had reframed it. So it's just, it's in, in answer to your question about how do you deal with you know, callers that call in that don't have the same opinion as you, I stand up for what I believe in, but I will do it in a way of giving the opportunity to the person to say, okay, wait, what do you mean? Back that up. And sometimes I disagree and say, okay, that's your opinion. You're entitled to it. And it's also my show. If I don't like it, I can always drop the gas. <laughs> now, <laughs> right? uh, yes, yes. And we're, we're going to take a break here in a minute. And when we come back, I, I want to jump into the NDE, uh, 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 your near-death experience. But what I want to ask you is when you listen to others share their near-death experience, could be at a conference, could be in a book, could be a video, where you have sat back and went, ah, that's not quite right. Have you disagreed with somebody's near-death experience? Mm, great question. Yes. I mean, there's many different experiences that people have within the end. It's not a classic go-to-the-light type of experience. But... I mean, do you want me to answer this now? Because no, I, well, I, we're, we're going to set this up because we're going to talk about this throughout the next segment because I, uh, there are so many different yes. things that yes. are going on there, and there almost yes. isn't a common denominator, right? There is and there isn't. There's, sometimes there's psychological breaks that could happen because pain is so extreme that one could go into an altered state to create a justification of the experience. Sure. I have heard those mistaken as a near-death experience. Yes. There you go. I kind of went through that myself as well. Let's take a break right here. Our guest tonight, Lisa Gar, The Aware Show. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. We're going to take some phone calls to uh, the top of the next hour, so get ready for that. This is Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and KGRA The Planet. You can follow me on Twitter at JChurch Radio. You can follow Lisa at The Aware Show. We'll be right back. More with Lisa Gar after this short break. Stay with us. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station, Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. Hello, Fader Knots. This is Jimmy Church, and I'm introducing New Pharma, a company whose products are based on science human function based on the endocannabinoid system, or ECS. New Pharma firmly believes in this science, and their research indicates that support of the ECS provides the beneficial effects for a healthy lifestyle. New Pharma's science includes relief capsules for pain relief, sleep capsules, which are natural support for occasional sleeplessness, Foundation is support for your ECS, and Fit Capsules support your active lifestyle. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2B for a 33% discount on all of their products. 
or visit newpharma.com for all of the knowledge on the science. That's GNUPharma.com. Go back, Lee Tappy. Hi, this is Ray Sobs here repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church. Fade to black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. (laughs) (laughs) Just... Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. Ancient Life Oil. Life changing. The real oil. CBD is truly ancient life oil from the source. This oil has no psychoactive effect and is also legal in all 50 states. When you're healthy, you're happy. The truth about this wonderful plant is that it wants to give back to mankind life, longevity, and happiness. Ancient Life Oil are golden grade, all organic, non GMO, and infused with high quality liquid coconut oil. It's simple. Just go to ancient ancientlifeoil.com today that's ancientlifeoil.com the best purest organic and non-gmo cbd in the world go back lee tappy the statements made regarding these products have not been evaluated by the food and drug administration these products are not intended to diagnose treat cure or prevent any disease please consult your healthcare professional about potential interactions or other possible complications before using any product This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black. Across the globe on the Game Changer Radio Network and the one and only KGRA Radio, The Planet. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. This is our second to last show of the year. Tonight, our guest is Lisa Gar. This segment of Fade to Black is proudly brought to you by River Moon Coffee, makers of the Fade to Black blend. Use that promo code F2B blend, and you will get 15% off of your order. Just click on the banners over at Jimmy Church Radio. Dot com. Our guest tonight, Lisa Gar, and now Lisa. Now I I I, I understand that this is somewhat confrontational in that you know have you disagreed with others near death experiences and and you know have you just sat back and went you know uh, I'm not so sure if they had an NDE right that, that maybe they're mistaken maybe they're being dishonest maybe they just wanted to write a book. You know, and I, I, I don't know how to um, to use my own discernment because I haven't had an NDE. Maybe, maybe not. If you know what I'm saying here. Well, you know, not in a way of judgment, though. Yes, I'll give you an example. I was on a panel once, and um, it was an NDE panel, and a woman was speaking about her experience, and her experience was so so tragic. It was hard to listen to, but she had been sexually molested by her father several times. And she was explaining that in the moments of the confrontation, she would leave her body and go to what she described as a near-death experience. And as I was listening to this, she was talking about seeing God and having this you know, beautiful, peaceful experience. And it was hard to listen to because I thought it was more of a, I mean, it, it for her, really felt like it was the only place that she could find peace. And I don't know if it fit under um, Raymond Moody's, you know, classic definition of the NDE and his characteristics that he wrote about after his, you know, thousands of interviews of people with near-death experiences, and he wrote, you know, maybe 20 typical characteristics. Um, That was actually one of the ways that I found out about mine was by interviewing Raymond, because I had completely forgotten about it. But 
it was in that experience that it wasn't a judgment against, oh, she didn't experience the classical definition of any. I, I, it was more so my heart going out to her, and I saw it more as a way for her to be able to manage and cope with this a very, very wrong situation. And it did, however, aid to her healing so that she was able to function as an adult and get married and have children and have, you know, a life where she could function. And so if it was an out-of-body experience and she found God in that moment, God bless her. Why not? And, you know, what, and, what, ab- and what about that part of it? Uh, for you, God. yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, that's the, is, well, that's the in, big question, right? That's that's the one of the fundamentals of the near death experience that most want to know that haven't had a near death experience. They want to know, you know, did you know what happened? Did you see God? What is there a heaven? Is there a hell? You know, uh, and for you, before your NDE, were you religious? Oh, God, yes. I went to, no, no. I went to uh, <laughs> way too many years of Catholic school. Right. <laughs> Recovering Catholic. And that was old school, too. Oh, my goodness, no. I, yeah, no, I didn't, in my near experience, I did not see the man in the sky. I, that was not my experience. That It had been described for 12 years of Catholic school. <laughs> and how did it, um, did it change your view on religion? What, it changed my view on life. So, when I mentioned Wayne Dyer and mentioning that I am God, he used to say that, and that God is in all things, it's universal. So what I experienced was the seamless, boundaryless connection between all things instantly manifesting without time. So I had this experience of, um, I was in a, a mountain bike race, and it was very hot. It was about 108 degrees. It was about 5,000 feet of climbing, and it was um, it was a 24-mile race, and it was really the heat that was that was um, the severe conditions. And no matter how much I drank of 100-ounce Camelback, I had dehydrated my body and passed out at the top of the mountain while I was still riding. And I must have hit a rock first because my helmet shattered in, like, it just fissured. And then I continued to um, roll down the hill and my helmet, you know, flew off and so forth. So it was in those experiences of the bottom of the hill and trying to get back up to my bike that I started to drift off and to slip into these altered states of consciousness. And I still... I never will know if it was another dimension I really went to or where or if it was just a state in our minds that we all can access if we really, truly get the conscious mind offline, if we really, truly knock it offline, if we have this state of super consciousness, and it could be both, to be honest. So if we have this state, what I experienced was the interconnectedness of everything, the boundarylessness. I was the top of the swaying pine tree. I was the breeze that was moving the tree. I was the air that moved the clouds. I was the cloud. And then I had this swirling energy around me that was the feeling of Asia. And I had never been to Asia. I had no any type of, of relatedness to Asia, but I had the essence of Asia swirling around me, and it was the colors, but it had that feeling. I don't know why, and I didn't make any sense of it for years and years and years and years. And I just remembered, though, that it was anything I would think of, I would become. And actually, there were no thoughts, because thoughts are separate from ourselves. To be, That's something that I learned, that a thought is completely separate. When you become something, you're not thinking about it. You are that thing. And I became Asia. So you had no, you weren't asking questions? No. Wow, that's interesting. No, that's a conscious thing. Right, right. That's a a separate, that's a separate thing. Ask questions means you don't know. When you become something, 
just as you, Jimmy, are a man. You don't have to say, am I a man? I'm questioning that. Am I in a male body? You are. You don't think about it. You just are in a male body. Now, that's what it's like. It's as if you, you, know, if you have teeth. You don't think, do I have teeth? What do I do with my teeth? You just assume that the teeth are there and you own your teeth. And you're, it's just that simple. The, the beingness of who we are is seamless with that that we can create. So I learned about the, this beautiful art form of manifestation and non-locality. I learned about all this later, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but I was able to relate it back to the near-death. So when I'm interviewing someone about Larry Dossie, one of my original interviews with him about non-locality, I got that concept so quickly because I experienced it. Timelessness, things happening simultaneously, creating instantly, things happening in alternate realities. All of those great quantum physics films. I just saw um, Star Wars, the, the newest movie, and and it was so great because Luke Skywalker explained the Force as the thing that connects, it's not even a thing, it's the force that connects all things and can be owned by no one. That was what he was talking about. So what you're saying, this is interesting because when you have all of those spiritual leaders, you know, those icons that we read and listen to over the years, always come down to this one thing, you know, you become one with the universe. And, it sounds so colloquial. It right, so right. Terrible. It's just like, dude, save that, man. Okay, that's that's just too <laughs> simple. But that's exactly what you're saying here. Well, it was very, very interesting because that feeling of Asia I carried with me for a long time. I actually wrote about it in my book before I learned what it was. And yes, I be this this feeling of oneness. It it sounds so cliche. Mm-hmm. But it was truly how I experienced the near-death experience. I didn't go to the tunnel or the light. I experienced all things as seamless, as boundaryless. There was no boundaries or separation between me and anything else in this experience. But the feeling of the Asia was very distinct in my memory. When, I, when you remember a near-death experience, it's like remembering the clearest, most vivid vision you've ever seen. And it's and it and you remember it like it was yesterday, and it never goes away. It's like the brightest light. It forms. It must form in the brain, a very strong neural bridge that cannot be imploded. It it must form a very strong memory in the brain, because it's always and it's described by many people when they remember their near death experiences. They always say it's like it was yesterday. I can remember it as clearly as if it just happened. But the that experience of Asia, so I wrote the book and came out from Hay House, and I'm sitting on a plane with Gina, our dear friend and, and um, the producer of The Aware Show and my sister from another life, and we're sitting on this plane on the way to actually to Denver to do one of the Gaim shows, and the plane was kind of empty, and I was sitting... It was shortly after we had gone to Bali together, and there was a just a really difficult, you know, very difficult situation that we had in Bali, and a near-death experience happened in Bali, and I was sitting on this plane, and I'll remember this to this moment, the plane was empty, and I was sitting on it, I was kind of sitting upright in one of the chairs next to her, and I said, oh my God, that was Asia. That was what I experienced in the near-death experience that I just finished writing about. Wow. And I know the experience in Bali that you're talking yeah. about, and uh, uh, still uh, that messes with me uh, to this day. That was uh, yeah. just unbelievable. A friend of ours, oh, like uh, the, the audience doesn't know what we're talking about, but um, and, and you know what, and Gina's probably listening, so let's back yeah. off of this just <laughs> a little. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. so it's just it was just an, an amazing experience that I learned, the the near-death experience constantly unfolds itself because I could not have possibly comprehended everything that 
in that moment, and especially after my NDE and after I went to these great, incredible, expansive universes, I then shockingly got shoved back in my body because I heard the blades of a helicopter and my body was failing, so I was being airlifted out of this mountain to this hospital. And it, there was a medic that said, you're going to feel a slight prick, and he had a needle in my arm, and it scared me. And because uh, I had no idea what happened. The last thing I knew I was on a bike, and then someone was putting a needle in my arm, and I, I jumped. I flailed my arms. I all of a sudden, <laughs> I, I freaked out, and this poor medic was like, we're out of here. And I remember him saying that. And then I wound up in this, you know, the hospital. I was all very fear-based after that. It was very, I lost my voice. I choked. I couldn't speak. My my synapse, and I didn't realize that I had, I had broken the synapse in my brain in the language center of my brain. So right. I lost my ability to speak. I bottlenecked my words. That's another reason why I'm so grateful to have a voice. And I went into so much fear in the hospital and in those moments because I could not figure out where I was, what had happened. The last thing I knew was I was on my bike. And all of those feelings of the NDE went away completely, completely for years until I met Raymond Moody. And he was one of my professors at in a master's program I was taking at the University of Philosophical Research he was one of my professors, and he said, write about an experience. And I wrote about this experience of this accident, and he called me, and he said, my dear, you've had a classic near-death experience. And I was, you know, he, he it was amazing how I learned from him, from the master of NDEs right, <laughs> that right. I had had. It was quite an incredible experience. But it, it's... It, does unfold itself. Most people forget them because they happen in traumatic experiences and traumatic situations. And there's now these great institutes. This Luis Monero has an institute of um, consciousness studies, and I can't remember the exact name of it. But I don't know if you've interviewed him. But he can induce a out of body experience in a very guided, supported three day meditation, you know, institute, and he has certifications and programs where you can actually have these experiences in a room with like, you know, combined people. And it's great the way that people are bringing this experience to people's minds and and consciousness without having to have the tragedy surrounding it to instigate it. I don't recommend that. (laughs) When I was, uh, when I was 21, Going through those life changes that you do at that age, you know, questioning everything around you. Um, I had a roommate. I want your response to this. I had a roommate. This is in Pasadena. And and I mean, I'm going through, I'm reading the books and I'm, you know, all the spirituality and religion and the, the, the UFOs and conspiracy. I'm just, I am tripping out on life, right? I'm, I'm mm-hmm. right there. I'm on the edge of the cliff. And, uh, and he says to me, he goes, you know, I mean, he was a, a total atheist, and he goes, "Jimmy, man, don't you know?" And I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going through this traumatic thing, right? And he goes, "Don't you know what happens when you die?" And I go, "No, man, what?" <laughs> he goes, yeah, tell he, goes me. "He goes this," and he lays down on the floor, puts his arms on his chest, he closes his eyes, and he goes, "That's it. It's over. It's done. You become <laughs> dust." You contribute to evolution. You dissolve into the ground. It's over. And I'm like, dude, no. <laughs> right? No now, way. now, when somebody says something like that to you, how do you respond? There is absolutely no way because the consciousness doesn't have, it isn't matter. Consciousness cannot dissolve into the ground. It's not matter. It is, it is ethereal. And it's infinite. And the consciousness never dies. And if I am tapped into that, and if I believe that, and if I have that experience, then I play with this all the time, Jimmy. I tap into the consciousness of those that have crossed over. It's very interesting. I just learned that a friend of mine died two years ago. And I had called the company that he started um, 
and because I've been having a lot of thoughts and feelings, you know, of this person. And I called because he started a, a water company, and I called because I needed service on the water product. And I said, gosh, I haven't talked to my friend for a couple of years. How is he? And the person paused. She said, you didn't know that he died. Mm. And I instantly, instead of sadness, I instantly went into, that's why I've been thinking about him so much. And then I thought, God, this is going to be so much easier. I don't have to call him now. I can just think about him and instantly connect wow. to the the consciousness that was my friend. And it's actually even better and faster communication for me to close my eyes and sit in silence and connect with that vast consciousness. Universal, I mean, Carl Jung wrote about it. It's been around for, I mean, it's been written about for hundreds of years. About the, more than that probably, about universal consciousness, the collective consciousness. And if I really truly close my eyes and tap into that, you, Jimmy, could have thoughts and feelings that are not your own. So where do they come from? Where do they come from? You know, where and my, do they come from? my friend that I just mentioned, his name was Olivier, right? So about two weeks ago, uh, he calls out of the blue and we start having, you know, we're getting caught up on things. This is no joke. It's like two weeks ago. And I said, dude, do you remember? I just talked about this on the air, man. Do you remember when you laid down on the ground and you told me, you know, and you put your arms in your, and we become dust and we become dirt and, and that's it. And there's no life after death. And, and, uh, and he laughed and he goes, yeah, man, I probably said that. You know, I, I said, I said, I said, do you know how much you affected my life? Do you know how, how those words, and he just, he laughed it off. Yeah, but I don't, I don't believe that now. I said, but man, wow. <laughs> was that a, wow. You know, at it this changed cr- your life. Right, right. This epiphany time in my life. And he hits me with this and man, I had countless nights of no sleep thinking about now. And that, and which leads me to this. Oh, wait, you... I have something to interject really quickly. Sure. Artificial intelligence. Here's a perfect example. A perfect where example. A, a, yeah, a, where a computer or a software can actually take on the rhythms and patterns of human consciousness and recreate itself. These projects are happening now with NASA and many different, of course, you know, talk about disclosure, Um, projects we aren't hearing about, but if software can do this, can take on the emotions of human consciousness, then why wouldn't you be able to take on, say, a loved one, say, you know, a, a, a parent, and you have this, you know, I'm talking about futuristic here, and you have this computer take on the mannerisms and the actions and the emotions and the consciousness of the parent and say the parent dies then can you constantly communicate with that program as if it was the consciousness of the crossed over loved one what's the difference what is the, what is the difference what is the difference what is the difference if that, if that software can mimic the consciousness and the emotions and the feelings and the patterns and the behaviors and the reactions of a consciousness, a human being, we do the same thing. We take on the actions and behaviors and the consciousness and whatever of our loved ones or the people around us for human computers, constantly mirroring and mapping around whatever is around us. So then that memory can form into a essentially a collective connected consciousness. We're no different there than are, what NASA would form as an AI computer. Exactly. Stop. And there are people right now, maybe some listening to this show, that drive around, walk around, and live their lives not wondering if there is anything else to anything. They are actually closed off to those thoughts. They don't ask questions. They don't wonder about it. They don't want to know. That's why. They don't want to know. You know, you and I have children. Our children someday are going to grow up, and they're going to have 
robots and they're going to have a fully automated world. And in 50 to 100 years, it's going to be a completely different planet. And if, you know, multiple. So why would someone not want to know this? I know, right? Well, there's one thing I know about my two daughters. They will not have husbands. I'm going to make sure of that. I'm going to make sure of that. That's my life's, that's my life's mission. No. Saying the word no. But, but yeah, it, it, it blows my mind that, that there are those out there that – that think that there are not ghosts or there it's not apparitions so that you know that there's nothing out there the, the the universe is closed off there is nothing to anything there's nothing to wonder about there's nothing to be amazed about there's nothing to question right i i it, it, it freaks me out i did the greatest series on this and um it was i interviewed i don't know 20 different people in a whole summit of um uh uh, uh, not near-death experiences, but beyond. It was um, a great, great interview series. And I, professors and atheists and people that started institutes around it, and it really showed me that there is a universal connection, that there is life beyond life. And, um, you know, after all of these interviews, it was probably one of my favorite summits and series that I've ever done. And I had to say that, you know, beyond any type of expectation that I had, Exploring the Beyond was the name of it. And it was a great summit, a whole series on investigating different opinions about the afterlife. And it was so great. It's the um, people, if they look up theawareshow.com forward slash beyond, they'll see some of the interviews and it's really it was really cool all the our favorites you know Raymond <laughs> Moody James Van Prague but a lot of people that um you know and don't know and so forth it was really it was really a great series I, 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 I don't want to I, I don't want to put you on the spot with him specifically but those out there that do do that um hey, what's really going on I mean yeah, and I don't want to poo-poo on it because... The, no, sometimes it bugs me. i right. got to tell you. I mean, you and I have been interviewing these people that I think are the real deal. I mean, James Van Prague really, truly has... I've seen him talk about phenomenal things nobody on the planet would know except that one person whose tie fell in their closet that morning that stood there in the audience and wept because it was, you know, he was able to... I mean, I've seen phenomenal things with it. But then there's people, some, you know, some of the airways get a little crowded with, oh, yeah, my guides are telling me this, and my guides are telling me that. And sometimes my intuition just goes, well, how do they know? And who are they? And what are you really talking about? <laughs> have you, uh, well, have you, de- have you had anybody uh, with you directly try to contact one of your loved ones and you busted them? Um, I don't tend to have them do readings for me on the air so i tend not that i can remember because i really vet out people before are you being nice are you just being nice no i don't honestly remember okay um ever saying no you're not accurate because we do vet out people before i get contacted by a lot of people to be interviewed and sometimes i'll do you know i'll say look can we talk ahead of time because I really want to find out if, you know, not for a reading, but I want to find out more about you and your work and so forth. And I can hear and use my intuition to see if something is going to really feel true or not. And, you know, there's I, my, one of my teachers, my amazing um, guide in life, he's still with us. His name is Michael Tamora. I'm having him on coast on the 30th um, on uh, Saturday night. He's never been on before, and he is like the Yoda. He's actually um, a good friend of James Van Prague, but he is an amazing teacher. He has physically died five times, heart attacks, um, various different heart failures and so forth. He is the happiest, most jovial human being, and he is an incredible clairvoyant, incredible teacher, and healer. And I really have him to measure a lot of things against. When I used to, when he used to do readings back in the day, he would, I would sit with him for two to three hours and he would 
I would feel like I would go through lifetimes of karma in one sitting. Wow, that's incredible. Like, that's incredible. Uh, it was yes, amazing, I need to, amazing, amazing man. I need to take a break right here. So let's do that. And uh, okay, got that queued up. It's fade to black. Our guest tonight, Lisa Gar. Now, when we come back, we've got to take a look back at 2017. Take a little look into 2018, and then we'll open up the phone lines. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. More with Lisa Gar right after this short break. Stay with us. Way out here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk, Jimmy Church with Fade to Black, KGRARadio.com. ¿Qué tal, mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carson, el tiburón, y los invito para que escuchen mi buen amigo, Jimmy Church Radio. Claro que sí. Hurricanes, earthquakes, wildfires. This year we've experienced more than our fair share. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. And last month I decided to make sure my family does not have to worry about food should we get caught in a real emergency situation. Introducing Numana, a healthy, storable product that tastes so good that you'll want to eat it every day instead of just during those times of duress. All new Mana products have a 25-year shelf life, are MSG and GMO-free, no preservatives, and are made in America. With the new Mana pack in your home, you'll be able to sleep at night knowing that you've protected your family. Not only have I tasted and tested, I own it. Now you can too. Just click on the new Mana banner on JimmyChurchRadio.com and use the promo code Jimmy when you order. In addition to a discount, we'll send you an autographed Fade to Black t-shirt. Seriously. Go back, Lee Tappy. Do you worry a lot whether you're a college student, busy professional, parent, or grandparent? Ongoing stress and elevated levels of the stress hormone cortisol can rob your memory, your health, and your future. Now you can combat the effects of stress and anxiety while improving your memory and recall at the same time with the dietary supplement Calm and Clever. Studies show that the ingredients in Calm and Clever reduce cortisol by as much as 30% in one to two weeks. Call 1-800-758-8746 or calmandclever.com. You listen to us, and we listen to you. And so does the CIA. (laughs) KGRARadio.com Hi, folks. CBD is the home run hitter for health right now. Why, you ask? Because of what it does for the body. Unfortunately, I can't tell you all about the benefit. You know, there's reasons. Do your due diligence and log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. Ancient Life Oil uses organic ingredients and is blended in coconut oil for some of the best benefits. Legal in 50 states and non-psychoactive. Log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. I'm Rhys Evans, you're listening to Jimmy Church. This is a revolution. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution is on radio. Ciao. back fade to black our guest tonight lisa gar what a conversation this segment of fade to black is proudly brought to you by new pharma gnu pharma click on the banner over at jimmychurchradio.com go to their site read about all of the science behind new pharma natural solutions to health and wellness and use the promo code f2b you're going to get 33 percent off of your order and i'm going to tell you right now i take foundation and relax 
uh, the drops every single day. Keeps me centered. All right. Lisa Gar. Now, Lisa, 2017, one of the most traumatic years in, in the history of the world and the known universe, right? We've got, of course, politics and Obamacare taxes, North Korea, uh, Russia, Putin, sex, racism, the weather, hurricanes, earthquakes, ISIS, North Korea. It's been an insane year. How, how do we how do we get through this and, and center ourselves? Well, I listened to the first part of your show, and I loved your recap of 2017. That was fantastic. And I remember I, interviewing Greg Braden, and he talked about extremes being the new normal. And that set it up for me in a huge way because the weather extremes are a new normal. Um, I remember interviewing... Um, Glennis McCants and her talking about the truth exposing all things, not all things, but mo- many, many things. And it was a bleed over of 2016 to 2017 and how so many industries have crumbled and what has come to the surface has been the truth. The truth has exposed so many things and the housing crisis and the banks and religion, and so many things where the truth is mostly driven by the people, driving industries, changing entire industries. Um, We see this, they're all over the place in so many different ways. So I think that our relationship to crisis needs to change, and our relationship to chaos needs to change. When we get news that is shocking, disrupting, we need to set in our minds an anchor to go to a place of balance and to retrain our brains to a place of balance so that we can think clearly, we can help ourselves, help our loved ones, help people around us. This type of extreme nature and devastation and chaos and crisis and disruption is exactly what's going to always continue to happen. And if you let it constantly hammer your immune system, then the superbugs and the chemtrails and all of those will start to also bury your immune system. I think along with the products that you take and so forth, our mindset is our strongest defense against extremes and against chaos, and against disruption. And I mean this sincerely. When you receive information, or when it comes to you, you need a plan, first of all, but you really need to be able to stay grounded within the chaos and look and have the ability to listen to your intuition, to hear the truth of what is being said or what is happening, or look for the pictures and look... And it takes training. It's like a muscle. You have to exercise it. But in, you know, the headlines and all of these things, even the tweets, you know, it's all designed to shock us, to constantly keep us in a state of fight or flight. And that, of course, suppresses the immune system. I really, truly believe that it is our state of mind that will help us stay, you know, connected to ourselves, be able to make clear choices and stay sane in a situation and listen to your own truth. I think it's really, really important. It's not going to change. It's not going to go away. Things are not going to all of a sudden become calm. (laughs) I thought that so much had been resolved. You know, uh, racism, uh, these questions of, of sex and equality and, uh, the balance of the country that we just all understood that we were different, but we're, you know, we're here together and you know, we're all humans on this planet. We're all earthlings. And I thought we were moving in that direction. And suddenly this divide and conquer social media, media news world that we are in now, everything is just that. Like Greg said, he's such a smart dude, by the way, Greg Brady. Mm, right. And, and, Great, yeah. great hair products. I don't know what he uses. 
I'm but telling Greg, you. <laughs> he, Greg, Greg has got the he is Forever. he's got it going on. But um but it's true. Everything is extreme. The advertising is extreme. You know, it's it's all it, everything is uh you know, so polarized. It, it it there isn't anything down the middle anymore. And I thought that we were beyond that. I really did. I thought we were moving towards this collective mindset where we just, you know, we're all brothers and sisters on this planet. And no, that no, no. Social media will perpetuate division. It will. I mean, swipe left, swipe right. It, it's really so externally focused. It's great to connect people, and it's very double sided. But it can put our emphasis on the external. And after 40, 50 years of this, I wonder what the human being is going to be like. Are they going to have a a personal crisis, identity crisis of who am I? Because most of the emphasis of our identity is put into the palm of our hand in a device. And the emphasis to the inner of who we are and the sitting in the stillness and the you know, you know, trying to go on a device diet <laughs> right. is um, it really is. If you look at the society today, it's so convenient and it does connect us in many ways through our devices and through our phones. But it, it is putting a hundred percent of our identity outside of ourselves. And the spirituality has always existed. Um, religion has always existed. Wars have been fought over it. There is a sense of of inner that is being lost right now, and I'm wanting you know to to keep doing the aware show for this reason because it reminds people to focus on their own truth, listen to themselves, find out about their inner intuition what their body is trying to tell them to slow down, to listen, offers opportunities to de-stress. I mean, we do need to continue that. And our world is putting our emphasis outside of ourselves. And what it does to our immune systems is catastrophic. And this is the, you know, enter in superbug. And it continues to grow and those strains get stronger. So we need to put defenses against that which boosts our immune system, which comes from our own mindset. I truly believe this. We can't live in this state of shock and stress and addiction to the headlines and maintain sanity. We have to find our own inner peace amongst all of it. And I know it sounds, um, well, it doesn't sound airy-fairy. It's, it's, it's awareness. It's just simple awareness. And if you recognize it, we talk about this all the time. I mean, what is, what are these efforts to dumb down society? What are these, what are the chemtrails really truly doing? What are we really, all of those outside forces are attempting to take away our, what our rights, our individuality and so forth. The one thing that can never be taken away from you is your own sense of self, your own inner knowing. And there are so many ways to discover that and to find that it all comes from stillness, mindfulness. And it doesn't take going to a mountain on the, you know, in the Himalayas and sitting with a guru. You can do this 10 minutes a day. Then you can center and anchor yourself and listen and, you know, there's, you can do it through your dreams. You can do it in the morning. You can, and there's so many different ways to find time to find the stillness and connect. How do we get that mindset though into somebody okay i'll give you an example i'm on tour uh, with a band and uh we pull in to uh we're on a tour bus we pull into a truck stop walk in got the long hair right we walk into this truck stop it's in the south and this group of guys sitting on the at the counter literally say loudly uh bleeping hippies man Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. Now, we're talking about a white on white crime here. Right? <laughs> this mm-hmm. was this was this this racism vibe going on. How do you get to that person? 
how do you get to them? You know, it's one thing to speak in our own community and 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 where we get it. But this needs to be this is something that is a countrywide, if not a worldwide thing. And it it, it doesn't seem to have gotten better. I Certainly the events of oh. 2017 show that this is still inside of a lot of people and it can flare up quickly. Yeah, and it's coming out in the news, which is great because we it's always been there. It's just it's coming out more and more. But here's the thing: it's an it's a very traditional relationship technique. You can't change anyone else. You can only change yourself, right? You can only change the way you feel about something. So that person has a reaction to you. What do you do about it? What is your reaction to that person? Can you? Can you find a place inside yourself that says, well, obviously that's not my truth, and I obviously know myself, and I don't need to engage in that, and have compassion on that person? Or do you say, I'm going to full-on confront, engage, push against, cause resistance, and fight? Yeah, so we we left. Sense? We left. By the way, <laughs> there was no confrontation that right. day. I mean, that that's that's it. We left. Um, now and then, do we take 2017 um, and learn from it? Is 2017 going to be a, a failed experiment, and that we learn from that and move forward? I do think it's going to get more and more intense. Really? It's definitely going to get more and more intense. Yeah. And, I mean, look who we have in office. This is someone who perpetuates headlines, that wants to create disruption, that wants to create controversy, that wants to do the most outrageous things to attract attention. It's not going to get any better. <laughs> and it's our reaction to it. It goes back to what I was just saying. You cannot change anyone else. You can only change your reaction to it, well, your that, feeling. You know, Nobody can make you feel anything. You're you right. You're are right. responsible for that. And mm -hmm. this is, this is you know, again, I don't do politics on the show, and I know you don't either, but the point about uh, uh, Trump's platform was shock and awe to go and shake right. things up, to drain the swamp, mm -hmm. and and which is all a great message. There's nothing wrong with what he was right. saying. Yes. But he found a way to get into the insides of so many people and polarized everybody. There are those that love him. You can't say anything bad. And right. there are those that really despise him. And he effectively did just that on that agenda of being different, right? Of right, I am exactly. not the normal politician here. And that that inspired half of the country. He got elected. Right. You know, it's, and that's, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That level of disruption is, is exactly what I'm talking about. It's a good, I mean, it's, it wakes people up. It causes perturbation. It causes people to wake up and say, I like this, I don't like this. I right, agree with right. this, I don't agree with this. But it's not going to go away. So all we can do is change our reactions to it. We can agree and disagree with it, and we can have great conversations about it, but we can't let it consume us. We can't let it take over our immune systems, essentially. We have to have seniority over it, and we have to control and be and manage our state. And it's so much about that. You've got to be able to manage your state around catastrophic events, around tweets, around um, news breaks, around so many different things. It's all about state management. And if you really, <laughs> I actually did um, last year, it was last March, I did a, for the first time ever, a Tony Robbins um, firewalk. Oh, you did it. You Because I've never done it before, right? And I've heard about it forever. Did you burn? And did you burn? Did you make it? No. No one did. 10,000 people were there. No one did. And it was all about state. It was all about your state. It's all you about running really fast, too. <laughs> It was so easy. I mean, it was really nothing in the long run. There was, you know, there was like, I don't know, probably a hundred lines, and it was all the coal lines, 
and they were outside burning it up. I mean, it was full-on flames, eight feet high in these coal lines, and people were, um, you know, Tony was inside for the whole day, and you don't even get out there until midnight. And you're in the, you know, it was in an arena. It was literally 10,000 people. And this is the second day, I guess, out of the three or four days. And the first two days, it's all man, It's all talking about state changing and how everything is interdependent on your state. And then it, the very last thing that you do on the second or third day is you manage your state over these coals. And it is amazing that 10,000 people did not get burned <laughs> because we all had learned about managing your state. So the easy part was the fire walk. The hard part is when you get hit up against with things that really challenge you, really challenge your belief system, really devastate you, people that are doing bad and really wrong, horrible stuff in the world to hurt people intentionally that are opportunistic, that are really hurtful, and to manage your state around that. That's the hard part. The coals are nothing. And that's the reason that the, the whole point of it is to learn about state change. And when you ask me about 2017 and about shocking moments and what's coming up for 2018, it is going to continue. It's, and especially with social media, how connected we are and how small it makes the world, we're going to see and read and hear about and be impacted and affected by so many things. I mean, Southern California is turning into a desert. We haven't had rain here for since February. I know. Eight months. I know. And, you know, it's, it is you know, cloud seeding, whatever you want to call it, but what do we do about it? And so it's just a state change. It's managing, and we might have had one great season of rain, but we now are going back towards the drought. So what do we do about it? Well, last year, everybody got into action. They stopped their lawns. They replaced it with artificial turf. They stopped the excessive water. It, it's an ebb and flow. There's a lot that goes along with it, but... What can you do to manage your state around it? What can you do to make a difference? And how is that going to impact those around you? There, uh, this this whole thing with, you know, this little uh, disclosure thing that happened back on December 16th. <laughs> I, little? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I have often said, Lisa, that once one domino falls in our supernatural paranormal world, Whatever it, whatever falls, you know, time travel, parallel worlds, non-locality, locality that you were bringing up earlier, some quantum thing happens, uh, ETs exist, whatever. Once uh, that thing, one domino falls, everything is going to fall in right behind it. And how do you feel about that? Because when... Uh, you know, we talk about near-death experience or, you know, life after death and, and what happens to our souls and reincarnate. All of this is connected. Everything is connected. So yeah. if this domino has indeed fallen, what does that say to the rest of the world that is questioning spirituality and life after death and the, the universe being connected? Oh, this is such an exciting, it's a great, great, great time. You know, that the whole disclosure thing happened. It fell in line perfectly with the truth disruption. It is, it's so, and, it, and right before the end of the year, too, with the truth coming out and disrupting entire thought processes and industries. You know, I, I believe that the, you know, the tide raises all boats. I believe that there is a, once this type of information starts coming out, that it goes into that collective consciousness, Jimmy, and it starts to raise people's level of awareness, love of questioning. It brings up, if they even had a, a doubt or a question in their mind, it brings it to the surf surface and it starts to stir and it starts to question and they start to look for things and find their own truth within things. I think it's really important for, you know, personally, I've seen in the last two years more psychics than I've ever seen approaching me for interviews, more than books, 
conferences, entire summits. The, the, it has been like the year of the psychic. Have you noticed that? I have. I have. I have. It, it's been interesting with the amount of people that are saying they're receiving communication that are either talking about it or that are truly receiving it or they're accepting it or questioning it or denying it. As I said, it, it raises the tide and, and the rest of the people say, oh, okay, well, this is true, this is not true, but it brings it into the collective conversation. And so I love the fact that, that this you know, article came out in the New York Times. I love the fact that this question is being now looked at and that there was a program and it's finally coming out and being talked about. I love Snowden. I love all of it. It's all the same conversation, Jimmy. It's all about, I mean, it's disclosure on every level, on every level. And those things that were no longer working are breaking down, and it's because of people, because people don't want to be lied to anymore. People want the truth, and they're going to find it, and it's going to be through a grassroots movement or it's going to be through a, somebody finally taping a conversation and putting it on the air, it's going to be, people are having more permission to do that than ever before. And I'm so interested and curious as to where our world is going with all of this. I think it's, it's an amazing time to be alive. And I hope we get another, you know, 100 years, Jimmy, to see how it goes. <laughs> I... Because it's an active, conscious conversation, and I really, truly am excited about it. You know, I I Personally. think, yes, I know. And I think about our children, uh, you know, and my daughters and this, uh, the millennial and, and the generations that are like two or three removed from uh, you and I, right, that that don't question the alien presence. They were raised with it. They're cool with it. They, 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 it's not a question for them. But think about the world that they are going to be exposed to in 20 or 30 years. Uh, you know, think about this for a second. What if, what if we have ships, and I'm being serious here, alien ships pulling up mm -hmm. like freighters do at our harbors, bringing goods and trading uh, mm -hmm. on the, on the how the economy will change and how we mm -hmm. look at you know, think just Bitcoin think, and all of it. Yes, what, you know, and, and, and trading with us with something like that they find precious here that they don't have, and you know, like maybe they want dirt. Right? <laughs> mm -hmm. You guys yeah, have the best. Yeah, you guys have the best dirt, and it's the most mm -hmm. valuable thing to them. You know, whatever it could be, but just think that's that's the world that they are going to be living in. You know, and it's 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 right around the corner. I'm excited for or water. Maybe they want the, our clouds. Maybe that's why it's salt, so right. <laughs> we <laughs> want yeah, we want salt water. Well, we got lots of that. Yeah, <laughs> let's let's wheel and deal. All right, let's take a break, and uh, when we come back, Lisa, you want to take some phone calls? Sure, I'd love to. Let's I'd open up to. the phone lines. Lisa Gar, three two three eight two five five zero four five. And uh, we'll take some phone calls and uh, continue this excellent conversation. I'll be right back. Hi, everybody. This is Rob Halford, the Metal God, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station, Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. Okay, nurse, let's get this man to the ER, stat. Right away, doctor. We see this every day. Heart attack or angina pain due to blocked and clogged arteries. Chelation can remove obstructions or blockages from arteries and help avoid painful and expensive surgery. Now there's Angioprim. It's a liquid oral chelation product that you take with juice. You start to feel the results fast. Angioprim increases blood flow all over the body, and that means more energy and strength to take on the day with less aches and pains. 60 years of research has gone into chelation. And Angioprim is the result, a safe and easy way to unblock your veins and arteries from buildup that slow circulation. Paging Dr. Jones, please report to the emergency room right away. Log on now for a special radio offer from Angioprim. That's angioprim.com slash radio. 
A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M. Angioprim.com slash radio or call 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Your contact for current news and trending topics. KGRARadio.com Hello, Fader Knots. This is Jimmy Church, and I'm introducing New Pharma, a company whose products are based on science. Human function based on the endocannabinoid system, or ECS. New Pharma firmly believes in this science, and their research indicates that support of the ECS provides the beneficial effects for a healthy lifestyle. New Pharma's science includes relief capsules for pain relief, sleep capsules, which are natural support for occasional sleeplessness, foundation is support for your ECS, and fit capsules support your active lifestyle. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2B for a 33% discount on all of their products. Or visit newpharma.com for all of the knowledge on the science. That's gnupharma.com. Go back, Lee Tappy. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of Fade to Black by just calling 605-562-4482. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Just call 605-562-4482. You can listen to me, Jimmy Church, on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Go back, Lee Tappy. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony. Damn it. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. Our guest tonight, Lisa Gar. The Aware Show. Co-host with me also over on uh, Coast to Coast AM. And uh, so I'm going to open up the phone lines, 323-825-5045, and uh, we'll continue this conversation. And Lisa, are you ready? I am. Hey, let, let, let me ask you this. Um, mm-hmm. When you first started over at Coast and you started taking phone calls, uh, it's a pretty pretty nerve-wracking thing to do for the first time, isn't it? Oh, you know what? I love the Coast listeners. They're so nice. They're so, they're really awesome and so smart. I Don't I, avoid, don't avoid the question because you no, know I what I'm... Had, well, was I scared the first time I took questions? Yes. Most of my questions are guest-driven, I mean, about the topic, so I don't really do open lines like you do. Right. Um, which, because I'm usually on a, a, with a guest. So, right. Yeah, that hasn't. Um, oh, so you, been. yeah, you haven't done the free for all then. I haven't. Uh, Jimmy, that's your expertise. I, You're really good at it. <laughs> I, that's your thing. Yeah, I, right. Most of my um, interviews, most of mine are interviews on Coast, and I and usually am talking about something that I am interested in. So, yeah, it's my, fa- it's my favorite thing. It's just wide open. Let's go, you know, and, and they're all over the place. 
And, you know, you got to bring your A game for sure, but... Uh, I love, you're brave and mm, you're wonderful at it. Oh, so man. I, I just... Doing I, that. I really dig it. So speaking of that, let's go to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Say hi to Lisa Gar. Who's calling? You're live. Up. Oh, <laughs> so, it's an alien. <laughs> that was, I, you know what? I don't think um, I've ever had that happen like that. <laughs> three two three eight two five five zero four five. And uh, now uh, let's uh, go uh, back to uh, the near death experience question because when we're dealing with, like I said earlier, with uh, disclosure. And the question of there's there's two fundamental things, I think, that um, uh, we have asked since we started to think. Are we alone in the universe? And what happens when we die? Those are the two questions that... Well, uh, you know, let me ask you, Jimmy, because I I do need to ask, and you've said this to me a couple of times, what do you think? I mean, what do you think happens when we die? You've talked about... Atheism, you've talked about many different experiences. Where do you land now? Uh, I, I, I am of the, the, well, this is what I would like to be, right? And especially after talking to so many great minds about this, like Danny and Brinkley and so forth, mm-hmm. that I, um, it, it comes down to electricity, it comes down to ones and zeros, the positive and the negative. And our body is, and our brain is, and our consciousness, it, it's electricity. And it doesn't go anywhere. It continues. So that's, that's now, is it a, 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 a question of reincarnation? Do we just go out into the universe? Do we go to another planet? Do we do we not reincarnate? Do we just just you know go out as souls and and learn and and experience the universe, you know, without a body? Uh, I I do believe that things continue. You know that that's I I don't think it ends. I so like an electrical pulse. And well, because yes, you know, I, I think that our souls have energy. And and it just continues, you know. And there are there are uh, there are intelligences out there that have put us here. I I, I really firmly believe that. And at, once you um, elevate yourself to another, um, uh, uh, you graduate. You graduate. And once you once you graduate, when we graduate here on Earth, when we graduate, um, I don't think that we're going to in a thousand years or 10,000 years on this planet. We're not going to have our bodies anymore. You know, we're going to we're going to go on to the next thing. Is it a light being? You know, I, I, I don't know. But I know that our minds continue. Our souls continue. I can't wait to experience it. Well, I can. I'm enjoying myself now. But mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. but there there is a fundamental question out there, and and I I really believe that it comes down to um, you know at the atomic and subatomic level that that we just continue and we exist. I I don't know how it is, but we'll find out. That's a great. That's a great definition. I love that. It makes sense, and it comes from a you know quantum physics perspective. What makes you think that, and what makes you say that intelligent life forces put us here? Um, and we'll go back. To that. Yeah, What's yeah. Oh, okay. And if you're on hold, just stay right there. We're, Sorry, we're, we're getting on. no. That's okay. We're getting deep, and uh, um, I have I have a real problem with our foreheads. Okay? Now that now hmm. what what am I saying? Tell you, me. you have a forehead, right? Above I your do. eyebrows. It goes up. It's a forehead, right? The foreheads are new. They are new. The, all of our what some will say are our ancestors, you know, that we evolved from Cro-Magnon, uh, uh, Neanderthal and and before that. 
all of the th- those all lack foreheads. Foreheads. It goes hmm. straight back from your eyebrows, right? <laughs> Just straight back. You're now, talking someone else up over there. It, but yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Uh-huh. Now, we have only had foreheads for 150,000 years. Before <laughs> that, no foreheads. And so there isn't a million years of evolving. You know, there isn't anything, you know, Cro-Magnon and Neanderthal, they were living here 30, 40,000 years ago uh, here. So obviously we didn't evolve from them. There was no crossover there. So how how did that happen? How did that happen? Well, I, I, that's a great point. If you think about it, everything has a purpose on our body, but what's the purpose of the forehead? And and they just appeared. And Does it if have you, a purpose? Yeah, and if you look at a picture of you, right? A picture of you, and maybe next to you is uh, pick somebody, uh, Fabio. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have a picture of Lisa Gar and Fabio, and then let's g- compare that to Cro Magnon or Neanderthal. There is no, there is no smooth crossover there, right? There isn't, there isn't a missing link. So, therefore. I think somebody put us here. That I, I really, 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 really believe that. I, I really do. So I think something intelligent just uh-huh, just, that, yeah. just just put us here and and allowed us to be. You know, and and that that that's that's where I've been. I know it's. I mean, strange. obviously, that there's a reason for us to be here, and a purpose for us to be here, and I. I think that that's a, a beautiful way of looking at it. And some have, you know, some think there's a, a purpose and some just want to just be. Yes. And figure it out in the meantime. Right, mm-hmm. right, right, right. So Not everyone thinks that there's a purpose for living. That, you know, there, that does not necessarily have to be the case. Yep. And I agree. Yeah, there, our DNA is so smartly put together. It wasn't, it an, it wasn't an accident. Lightning didn't strike some amino acids on a crystal in some creek and right. magically, poof, you know, uh, here we are. It didn't work that way. All right, let's go to the phones. Hi, you're live. I'm okay. Fade to Black. Say hi to Lisa Gar. Uh, hi, Lisa. Hi, Jimmy. How are you both doing tonight? I'm doing good. Hi. Who's Who's calling? My name is Tom, and I am from Dayton, Ohio. Tom from Dayton, Ohio. Right, hey, Patterson. Tom. Yeah, right, Patterson. Yes, right, Pat is. I I actually can hear the the jets at night when they fire up. Do you ever see ET running around? Uh, interesting. Uh, no, I haven't seen an ET, um, but I, I've been interested in the subjects for so long. And the other day, I was over at my friend's house, which is in Fairborn. And I said, you know, man, we were talking about this disclosure stuff. Right. And I said, you know, man, I have never, never seen anything in the sky that I would say is, you know, not an airplane. And we both started looking up, and I'll be darned. <laughs> two beams of light just didn't shoot off like crazy. Oh, I, you got to love it. It wasn't a shooting star. It was like horizontal on the plane. And he wow. said, well, how do you like that? You be careful what you just, wish just for, like right? Just like that. The first time and you both in 40 it. years. It was just amazing. Hey, so I do have a question for both of you, one for Jimmy and one for Lisa. Sure. Yeah. Okay, uh, so Jimmy, we were talk- you were talking about disclosure. Well, you have been talking about it for quite some time mm-hmm. now. And uh, it did get into the media, and, and I'm with you, man. That is awesome, no doubt. But then you also talked about how, you know, you were sitting around with your family and, you, and somehow this conversation, which is not a normal conversation for you guys, got brought up and your family members were all like, eh, meh, you know, whatever, of course. Right. Um, so I'm kind of, I kind of get that sentiment. Like, um, other than the few people that I know that I can talk to this stuff about, the general population just, you know, it's like, you know, uh, uh, Rappaport said this on one of your last shows. He was just like, everybody's like, yeah, uh, so what's for dinner, you know? Um, so I'm just wondering, um, what do you think it's going to take? Uh, because it's one thing for us to, uh, us in this community to be interested in, in it, 
but it's another thing for the, it to get into the general consciousness of the public. And so right. what do you think is going to take? What can they actually say um, that is going to just hit people and say, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. We got to start paying attention. I, I don't think because we just had that happen. I don't think that they could say anything or show anything that would be any more extreme than what happened, uh, you know, last Saturday. What I think would absolutely tip the scales on a global sense is the serious Independence Day moment. You know, uh, some two-mile-wide ship just cruises across the United States and, <laughs> and, and you know, gets on Facebook Live for, <laughs> for a few hours. That, you know, that's that, if you really want to close the book on it, that's what it would be. Because, look, we just had the Pentagon and Harry Reid and video and and a pilot and a secret Pentagon program. Sure. And OK, so and that for most, like I said, was just like, yeah, of course. What did you think? Of course, we're not alone in the universe. But you're right. Like the rocket that came into the atmosphere from Elon Musk, it was all over social media, it was all over the phones, it was big news. That was, you're actually right, that's a great point. Yeah, I think that's what and, it would take. And then Elon that, Musk that's tweeted great. that it was an alien. Uh, I do have a question for Lisa, if I could sneak this in there. Absolutely, go yeah. ahead. Okay, uh, so Lisa, um, this is my first time actually hearing you, so this is great. Um, but I, I really caught on to something that you said earlier in the show uh, where you were talking about how uh, people that have passed and like how they could reach out to you and um, you know either give you a thought or a feeling. Mm, yeah. And the reason that that actually struck me is uh, recently on YouTube I had I was watching a couple of videos um, which I don't know if these are true or not, but I kind of have the feeling they are um, from Dan Burris, who was a supposedly disclosure talking about J-Rod that was at Area 51 and how he had to do samples on him. And I, I, I normally meditate every night. Um, mm. And so last night in meditation, I decided, you know, if he's still there, which, you know, this could be, you know, the videos could be a hoax. I don't know. But mm -hmm. I said, if he's still there, you know, wouldn't, I appreciate if I was in his situation, somebody else reaching out and saying, hey, look, we know about you, and, and you know, here's some thought, here's some comfort for you. So I decided to reach out to him, and this is the first time this has ever happened to me. I reached out, and almost instantly, all I got was just complete sadness, like tears in my eyes, sadness. Wow. Hmm. And, and you can't, of course, that would I not have come from you. I don't know what that means. I, I mean, really, my question is, is is that sadness because maybe he's passed? Or is that him reciprocating that sadness and saying, you, you, you know, trying to give me a message saying, you know, I feel bad for humanity or I feel bad for you? I, or what I don't happened under, to him I don't know how so to interpret sad, that. But yes, yes. That's a beautiful example of what I was talking about, those I mean, it's it's kind of like space travel, where you can travel into other people's consciousness and look at life from their eyes. You can't impact it, but you can maybe feel that. And just as a as a you know, just as an idea, doing during a meditation and say, what would life be like from this person's eyes? How would they see the world? Very easy to do. It's just looking from different perspectives, but the the feeling that you had, the thought that you had, explains a lot to me because you couldn't have had that on your own. There was nothing in your world that would have made you sad at that moment, right? Right, absolutely. And usually, uh, meditations are for me. You know, you get it's almost like ener energizing. You know, you yeah. get peace, you get love, and. You, it just right. helps you through the rest part of your day. I mean, anybody that meditates, right. you know, probably gets their own thing out of it. But uh, for me, it's usually, it's like an energized thing. And I just thought, you know, I, I've never, like, tried to reach out to anybody. I've tried to, like, give energy to people that are needing it, like healing. I try to mm -hmm. think about that. And, and just this one case that the video that I watched uh, with this 
the Stan Burris. I don't know if he rings a bell to anybody. But, oh, we we all know Dan. Oh, okay. Uh, but um, but hey, hey, Tom, he was so sincere, and you could almost the, the palp. You could almost it was almost palpable his sadness when he was talking about the subject. Right. right. And I don't know if that was like a transference thing, and then so when I thought about it. You know, I got that sadness from that video, or if, you know, I actually, you know, did I reach out to him and, and did I actually see his sadness or his frustration in that situation that he's in, if he's still there, I don't know. Yeah, don't exactly. Know. Yeah, it, You know, and Tom, thank you for the phone call, man, and we'll see you tomorrow uh, night on the show. Welcome. Absolutely. Thank you. I've, you know, I've thought about that a lot, Lisa, uh, which is this. What if, you know, E.T. shows up, right? We're not actually, like, communicating. And E.T. says, you know, we've been channeling with a bunch of people on this planet for a long right. time. Right. <laughs> we've been trying to tell you. We've been try- I honestly do feel that the veil has gotten thinner and that our level of communication, and that it could be through the, all of the frequencies going through the air or the scrambling or whatever it could be. Right. But that we are receiving more and more messages than ever before and it's it comes through with the uh, you know the amount of people that are accurate the, but remote viewing's been happening forever and psychic phenomenon's been happening forever it just seems to in, have intensified in the last couple of years maybe there's more permission for people to speak out about it but all i'm saying is it's not just for those who write books it is just as our friend just said, it is within the ability of everyone to close your eyes and think about a, a subject or a person or look at something from a different perspective and just observe. Just doing that teaches you to listen to your own intuition. That exercise, whether you get anything or not or whether it's true or not, it doesn't matter. You are teaching and training yourself to get in touch with emotions and the more you do it you will find validation that was right that was not right that's true that's not true and you'll find and you'll work with it i think most people who are um who have any type of intuition or psychic phenomenon all they do is work with it enough that they learn, oh, that falling feeling means this. Oh, that floating feeling means this. That flying feeling means this. As they get response enough from people, they get validation as to how things link up for them. So, And you hear various people that are on amazing channels say that, oh, yeah, whenever I see this, it means that. Did this happen? And the other person says yes. And it's, um, it's just about, I do think we all have that ability to be able to connect with with other types of consciousness. I really do think that we have that ability. It's a part of our brain. We have not practiced or opened up or worked with, but I believe it's there. It's a mother's intuition. It's, I was thinking of you and then you called. It exists. It has forever. It's just if we work with it. And it could also even be an untapped part of our brain that we're not used to. Of course, school doesn't teach that to you, and nothing about school teaches you about your intuition. So it's never really developed from when we're young. And it actually gets squashed when we're young because people think that you're weird or you're a freak or something like that happens, so it gets turned off and you do it out of, out of survival. So I do think that it exists in all of us, and that was a great explanation from your friend. We got time for one more phone call before the break. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Say hi to Lisa Gar. Hi, Lisa Gar. My name is Don, and I'm from Modesto. Hi, Donna. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I have a question, or actually a theory, about why um, humans get alien contact. And I'm thinking that, as you know, or as you had mentioned, that Dr. Wayne Dyer said that we are thought, right? Mm-hmm. And what if... We are God made manifest on earth, and this is just a biodome, and they want to be part of God. And they want to be able to manifest and create. And so that's their reason for wanting Coming to be to. part of us. Mm-hmm. 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 And the easiest way to contact or communicate would be through our consciousness, right? Right. 
that would be the easiest way to do that. I think it's it's the ultimate form of communication is telepathy. And as I said, when my friend passed away, I thought, great, now I can communicate easier than having to try to reach him on the phone. <laughs> because you really can connect in certain forms of consciousness. And and this is not just me having this theory. This is being studied in institutes all around the world of consciousness studies and proven and double-blinded and non-locality and Duke University. I and mean, there's so many different studies on this. Um, non-local healing, we know about those great studies. So, of course, what you're saying makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Why would it just be limited to plants and amoebas and, and Petri dishes, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. And also, it's a belief system, too. So, if you believe something like that would be true, then you can work with it and you can sit in stillness and quietness. And that's one of the things that I'm really talking about doing is the more we sit in stillness and the more we sit in, in moments, and this can be five minutes, it could be two minutes, it could be whatever you feel that you can handle, what you can stand at the moment, and just see what comes in. Don't give it any energy. Try it again the next day. And work with yourself on that. And it takes your attention off of the external and puts it into the internal. So thank you for your question. I appreciate it. There you it. go. Thank you so much, Donna. We'll see you tomorrow night on the show. Okay. Uh, oh, I think uh, she just uh, dropped out there. Um, <laughs> okay, so this Friday, or I'm on Coast Friday, you're on Coast Saturday, uh, Saturday and yeah. uh, I want to know who your guests are uh, for everybody, but also where can everybody go to the Aware Show? So it's the com, and um, if people are interested, in uh, my book is um, either on Hay House or Amazon. It's called Becoming Aware, and you can look at on the website, theawareshow.com, and all the information about my shows and books and so forth are on there. Um and if you want to go to the the website I said earlier, theawareshow.com forward slash beyond, um, then that will take you to that wonderful summit that I did about the afterlife, which is so great. It was really a great um, in-depth investigation into the afterlife, many different perspectives, and it came together in a beautiful way. So, that's And, also and nice. we've got the Conscious Life Expo coming up. Yes. What are you going to be doing there? I am going to be on George's Cosmic Questions panel, which is going to be really fun. And that's on Saturday afternoon, February 10th. And um, I will be hosting another uh, couple of panels as well. So it's, uh, it's a great weekend. It's always so fun and so crowded with like-minded people. And it's a lot of fun. February 9, 10, 11, and you, of course, are going to be what day? Oh, I'm there. I'm there every day. I'm going to be doing the same thing that you're doing. You know, I'll be hosting some uh, the Ancient Aliens panel. panel, but you know, I'll be introducing and running around and and hosting and and mm-hmm. uh, just being that that guy. It, it is so much fun there. That's the thing. And you bring up the best yes. point of all, which is it, everybody there is happy, cool full of questions, full of wonder, and it's just amazing. You feel the vibe the second you walk in uh, to the LAX Hilton, and it's just its one of those events you don't want it to end. Right. It's good. It, it is all. And a lot of great stimulating conversation happens. Not only are you with like-minded friends, but, you know, one of the panels I'm on is called Shifting the Paradigm Through Media, and it's on Sunday, February 11th from 12 to 2, and great people are on it. I mean, the director of Vaxxed, Dale Bigtree is on it, Christine Bosdale, the uh, program director at KPFK, Richard Green, a lot of great people who are in media and understand that you know, one of my goals is to bring conscious media into the mainstream and have the mainstream find their, their conscious conversation within themselves. It's not necessarily creating a new audience. It's the audience that's already there and waking them up, and you are in that same exact boat. Conscious media is the new mainstream, in my opinion, and it's what is rising 
up to find and make sense of everything that comes at us every single day. It's the conversations you're having with your friends and your your you know your loved ones, but it just puts it on the air and gets more people involved. And it's one of the things that I know is going to be just a whole just like you've been doing forever. It's it's the new trend in media is conscious media. Yeah, there's no question about it. And I can't wait to, you know, hang out with you and of course Jean is going to be there. She's the big star. Yes. And I hope she you know, she's out traveling right now. I hope she's listening tonight and and she's smiling. But Gina, safe travels and we'll see you when you get back. Lisa, uh have a great time on coast uh this Saturday. I'll be there on Friday and I'll see you at the Conscious Life Expo and have a great safe New Year's. You too, and thank you so much for sharing this time with me. I so appreciate it. You're the best, Lisa. Thank you so much. All right, see you soon. Lisa Gar, everybody. She has got the voice. The voice. And uh, do check her out uh, this weekend over at uh, Coast to Coast. And one of the great things uh, about Coast is that we have, you know, all of these 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 guest hosts there that that bring it, you know, and bring another view. And it's just just great to have Lisa on the show with us tonight. All of her links are over at jimmychurchradio.com. The Aware Show is right there. You can follow her on Twitter at The Aware Show. All right, I'll keep the phone lines open, and I'll see you guys in just a bit. I'll be right back. Jimmy Church on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. So you went to dinner last night, you had your favorite pasta. Or maybe you had a heavy, spicy meal and it left you. Get the tea.com. Maybe you mowed down a huge steak and your plumbing is all plugged. Get the tea.com. Our super strength tea will take care of your occasional. It's all organic and non-GMO. Get rid of. We have so many great supplements, but our super tea is number one. Get the tea.com. That's get the tea.com. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fate to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fade to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Go Beckley Tepe. Hey, can we talk about something serious for a minute? Your age. Getting old has its perks. But remember, being a few years younger... You know, your hair was thicker, you didn't have so many wrinkles, that extra weight wasn't haunting you, and you just felt better. Well, we can't turn back the clocks and go back 10 or 15 years, but you can start feeling and looking 10 or 15 years younger 
with Nature's Youth RSF. It's a doctor-formulated daily supplement that helps your body maintain its peak performance and fight the aging process. Imagine sleeping better, looking better, and feeling better. See how Nature's Youth RSF has helped thousands of people just like you at naturesyouth.com. Naturesyouth.com. The holidays are coming. Imagine how it will feel when your family and friends are asking you what you did to look so good. Your secret will be Nature's Youth RSF. It's time to start looking better and feeling better. Learn more and order your Nature's Youth RSF at naturesyouth.com. That's naturesyouth.com. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. KGRARadio.com This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com All right, welcome back. Fade to black. All right, opening up the phone lines. 323-825-5045 or 323-275-9695. And my point that I have been making, and so I do want to hear from you uh, uh, about disclosure. Is this enough? Is this enough? What would take it to the next level? If this wasn't enough for you, uh, what would it take? You know, I really, really do want to hear from you. I think it is it is not only such an important issue, but to see this this um, this thing that happened inside of our community, I would have thought that universally it would be woohoo. And we had some of that, I, and and there are some that are that 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 share my view on this, but there are others that are saying it, that this wasn't enough. So uh, you know, let's let's talk about this three two three eight two five five zero four five or three two three two seven five nine six nine five. Um, Lisa brought up a, a couple of questions that I thought were really good. Uh, and one of them, when she said, uh, what do I think? What do I think happens, you know, you know, after we, after we depart? And my, my original, I didn't want to mention this on the show, um, uh, but I had, you know, this thing that happened to me when I was 20. And I spent four days knocked out. I, I passed out unconscious in the hospital. And those four days, I didn't know it was four days until I came to. But at the end of those four days, this is what happened to me. Um, now, um, uh, I spent four days writing music, orchestral stuff. And I knew how to write out the music, and I was just writing music, and I had all this massive, beautiful orchestral things happening. And um, although I can, you know, I can write and read music, but I, I it, it's a very basic way of doing things. Um, but not when I was not when I was unconscious. Now. It may have been the morphine drip, right? It may have been a lot of things. When I came out of it and the nurse came in and said, Woo, uh, you scared us. You came and went like uh, every hour, right? I'm like, what does that mean? You know, now I don't, um, and looking back at it, I don't think it was an NDE. Uh, nobody ever told me anything. Uh, the doctors and the nurses kept all of that stuff from me, and they never really told me what was going on. But it was interesting to be knocked out for four days, and that was my experience. You know, I, 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 I don't know. I, I really don't. Let's go to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hey, it's Chase from Salem. Hey, Chase. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Where are where where are you right now? I am sitting at my house playing video games. Okay, you're sitting at your house playing video games. <laughs> All right, at least you're being honest. 
Uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, what video game are you playing? Can I ask? Oh, uh, World of Warcraft and uh, Skyrim. Re- you're doing Skyrim. How is Skyrim? Skyrim's fun. Uh, I like the expansions they did. Right, right, right. And is it... Um, there are some that say that Skyrim. I'm interested in 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 jumping into it. Okay, just so you know, um, yeah. that it gets a little bit repetitive, right? It's infinite. You can keep going, and and but is there a repetitiveness, or is everything that's, continuously fresh? That's why I like the expansions. Um, if you dive into it, it's it's hard to find places that you been to before if if you if you're going into the expansions because um there's a there's a couple of like expanded realms that you can like travel to and then there's more uh there's more levels to it so i think the I, i'm not sure how what the level cap there is now but right um there's just there's more to it there is uh it, it does have an end realistically like you can finish most of most of the questing and at that point, it would get kind of repetitive. But, I mean, you're looking at 80 to 90 levels of stuff to do. Now, do you go into the cities and the towns, or do you also just turn around and just go out into nothing? I like to go hunting, dragon hunting and stuff. Right. Turn right. around, just take off. Yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, I was reading uh, somebody's review uh, last month. I'm really into Skyrim. And he said, you know, you can only, you know, uh, you know, going into the towns, you know, in the city, that, that's, that's all cool. But it's really, really cool just to just go, right? Just yeah, to, just, just to venture off. Yeah, just turn around. The point of the game, <laughs> right. <sure. laughs> and I think that's cool, man. I think it's really cool. Yeah, I'm going to check out Skyrim and, and uh, yeah, I'm ex- yeah, I'm excited about it. Okay, so what's on your mind tonight? Um, well, you brought up the Electric Universe theory. Right. And I think that would be the first, well, the next first step to exposing the technologies that we're looking at. I think so, too. I, You know, one of the, if you let your mind go just a little bit, right, you let your mind go, and you start to accept a couple of things um, about how instant things are, not the speed of light, right. but, you know, I'm talking about instant and just what if there was an electric universe type of communication that those out there that are more advanced than us understand, and that's what they use? You know, there are no cell phones, if you know what I mean. And I think, I think that's pretty close to true. Really. I, I do too. I I really do. And then, so when you have somebody like you know Bashar or Michaela Sheldon, who was just on the show, right? Um, and those that are channeling and, and communicating. And then we find out that all of that um, is, uh, well, I, I, I believe that something is going on for sure. But oh, yeah. it, it's the confirmation of it. You know, what if it, you know, there's a confirmation level and we suddenly start to tap into that electric universe reality. Oh, man, I just think that's so exciting. <laughs> I really do, man. I, I, I yeah, I, me too. I think uh, things are going to start to uh, uh, things are going to start to. You know, I keep referring to dominoes, right? But it only takes one. Oh thing. yeah, oh, it started. Yeah, so it is definitely started. I think it was started years ago. I mean, this is just one of the many dominoes that's that's kind of fallen into place. But it's it's progressing a larger area. Of, and, and see, and this is and this is the point, Chase. That I'm glad you're bringing up. If um, we we accept the electric universe and the that possibility of the connections of everything, right? Then, if that if that is indeed the case, the, uh, the parallel worlds, the multiverse, time travel, um, uh, dimensional levels, all of that, you know, dimensional levels going. You know, in each direction, and of course, parallel worlds would be tied in with that. And then, if that is indeed the case, then that opens up the door to to time travel in that reality. I'm telling you, everything falls at the same time, right? It's oh yeah, like, oh yeah. 
And I mean, teleportation was already exposed. Right, right, I mean, right, 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 right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exciting times, man, man, man. I didn't think, I was always hoping for this kind of feeling inside, but, you know, I was I was uh, just going, you know what, man, what if it doesn't happen while I'm on this planet? How bummed would I be, you know, but it, it, it doesn't appear to be the case now, does it? No, it, I thought they were going to throw us into a Hunger, Hunger Game style society for a little while. You know, I thought they were kind of, they were, they had the advantage, you know, but it seems like we have a couple of game makers in our society right now that are kind of turning, turning on their masters and it's, it's dropped those dominoes in the right spots. You know, we've, we've progressed enough to where we have the ability to perceive what's going on so that we can proceed on. Well, what did you, so what did you think about December 16th? Was that, did you need that? Or, and you, was that, that no, enough? no, I didn't need that. I, I, I know a lot of people that do, you know, and that's what makes me excited for it because it's, it's the collective that needs to have the understanding. It's not the few of us that have, that have kind of realized this many years ago and, kind of watch it develop and all that, you know? Well, do you think, um, do you think it's going to continue like, um, something like the X files? I don't want to, but it's a, it's a good comparison in that, um, the, uh, Mulder and Scully had their ET contact, right? So they didn't, but the, the chase was on. Right, it was always oh, yeah. on the other side of the hill, always on the other side of the hill, being pushed further away, being pushed further away. Now that we've had this type How of how long is it going to take? Right, to go through the last right, year. right, right. Do you think that's what we're in for? For a little while, I think it's going to be sooner than a lot of us really expect. Right, um, like us, you know, because we we've, we've watched it for so long knowing that it was it would take such a a grand event to really collapse what's what's become the secrecy but there's i think i think it's going to happen a lot faster than we think it is i mean what 20 years ago the internet was created and look what happened look how fast we've developed since then you know yeah yeah and uh, the question that i have and chase thank you for the phone call man we'll see you tomorrow night the last show of the year tomorrow night we'll see you tomorrow right. night, chase be safe out there my Definitely. friend thank you, you for too. the phone call Abs- care, absolutely you too um how how big i mean the the drop that we had last uh saturday on december 16th that was pretty significant Okay, how big is the next one going to be? How big? How big is it going to be? What I mean, really, if it if it's going to further cement the four, five, or six different revelations that we had uh, last Saturday, how do we take that to the next level? You know what? How big is the next one? Whew. I can't imagine. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hey, Jimmy, this is Megan. How are you? Hi, how are you? That's the question. I'm all right. Um, I call because there's a couple things that um, you made uh, points about, including, like, what's the next step or what's the next thing. I agree with the technology, um, but I think that, you know, and I've actually seen documents on NASA's website that actually say that they're looking into pro- getting funded for projects that look into the multidimensional realm. Right. So it's actually for real, right? So they admit whether it's a, you know, whether they, you know, outwardly disclose it or not, but they admit that there's a multidimensional aspect to our world. So that's cool. Um, And then the second thing that I wanted to point out is that, you know, people are never going to be happy with disclosure. <laughs> they're never going to be a happy medium because there's this ufologist. They're on so many different spectrums, you know, there's in so many different levels and, um, and so many different dimensions that each person is working with it. I think that 
you know, and, and with all the experts that we have had over the years that have never had a voice so, um, so capable as it is today, they're going to want to speak loudest. So there's going to be so many different points of view. I mean, even several of your guests that you've had have said, you know, yeah, this one that happened many, many years ago, it doesn't mean that there's been any ever since. Right. You know, I've actually, yeah. you know, yep. which just, blew, I mean, oh my gosh, I wanted to write something in Twitter, but I didn't want to be negative. But, you know, I, <laughs> it's just, it frustrates me because, you know, that's what I've been hearing now is that, yeah, that one time, but that doesn't mean that, you know, anyone can see any more than, you know, any more past that. So what's it going to take for people to believe the people who have seen them? You know, and that's the frustrating part. It is the frustrating part. The best, yeah, right. I mean, the, you can give the best video, the best picture, the best, you know, um, <laughs> testimony, and they're never gonna. They're always gonna say, "We want proof." Well, we just gave you proof. We, exactly, <laughs> and see, this is the thing. Um, when you say it's never going to be good enough, when um, I, I mentioned earlier, you know, some kind of Independence Day type of event, right? Some huge yeah. mile, two mile, five mile, just right over Los Angeles, all the way to New York City, man, just cruises across the United States, right? And and it's right there, live, CNN, F- Fox, uh, F- Facebook, live, Periscope, everybody doing their live, right, right? And then there's going right. to be those out there that are going to, well, man, it wasn't that big. You know, yeah. it, it, you know it wasn't big yeah. enough. It, it, you know, that... That that was uh, uh that was Project Blue Beam. You know, that was a hologram. Oh that you know, that yes. you know you know it no, wasn't it, it was it was oh, from Zeta Reticuli, man. I need something from from the Palladians, man. I need you know, that that's not a far enough away star system. You know, we need something it's going to be it will never be good enough. I totally never. agree with you. I totally agree with you. Um I, and so we can just relish in the idea that we are so ecstatic over this and that it just puts us in a whole other place in our, in our minds, in our lives. You know, we have all been validated. The people who have seen them are validated to some extent by our government. And that means, you know, whether or not, you know, anybody, I mean, people can say that we didn't need the government. You know, we have to do our own disclosure. You know, I agree, but no. You know, we just we just need to know that it's okay to talk about it now. Like it's okay to bring it up, and our families won't think we're crazy anymore. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things. I think that I'm really happy for everyone out there and who's seen them and who's experienced them, and you know, and I hope the next step is that there's some admittance that there are extraterrestrials that are walking along here, and um, and that you know that it's they've been meeting with us and, you know, that would be cool too. I mean, the technology is neat, but you know, it'd be cool to really actually see one live. Yeah. There's going to be something here in the next, uh, you know, month or so there's going to be a continuation of this. There's going to be another video. There's going to be something else. And, um, and it's going to further, uh, uh, cement what happened last December 16th that I'm, I'm confident about. I, I can't imagine I'm, I'm excited. I can't imagine Mm -hmm. what it's going to be, you know, but it's just going to further cement what happened. And that's, I think what, do you think that we want more? I mean, like, I'm not saying more as in I'm not satisfied with the one that was released, but wouldn't it be great if we can have a series? You know, not just one, you know, these piecemeal, like, maybe have a series of of um, pictures or videos or something that they've been had, that they've, they've uh, signed off on. Um, it'd be neat to have a to have an array. Yeah, something. yeah. And, and, and I think that that's what's going to happen because – that that we saw one, well, three or two uh, pieces of video. Uh, you know, you know, this is a fact that the Pentagon and the CIA is sitting on thousands of those. 
I yeah, can't. and they want to pick the best ones that can't be really debunked or they don't want to look like fools, right? So I, I, I get that they need to be really, really careful what gets out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's sitting in this warehouse? That's the other question. What's in this warehouse oh, out in Vegas? I, I really, oh, man, exciting times. I wonder if... I wonder if Bigelow is hiring. I would love to go work for him and just to have a look. I, I, go to his website. <laughs> yeah, right? I know, right? <laughs> we'll, we'll see you tomorrow night on the show, and thank you for the phone call. Cheers. Absolutely. Thank you. And that, that's Megan, what a, what a great phone call. There is there's um, there is something else that that has been ignored about this video footage. And... Let me let me drive this home a little bit. The Navy had been uh, watching those craft out there off of San Diego for a few days. The craft were going from 80,000 feet to 20,000 feet and then to sea level and then back up in a straight line, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And uh, apparently nearly instant right thousands and thousands of miles an hour and, and and going up and down and so that's why they sent because they appeared again and that's why they sent fravor out and they told fravor and his wingman we've been watching these for a few days uh this is a real world this th- th- his words a real world situation what does that mean what? that's a crazy thing to tell a pilot also asked the pilot, asked Fravor, what kind of uh, missiles he had on his plane. He said he had dummy missiles. So what were they insinuating there, too, as well? Do they need to fire on this thing? So anyway, um, that removes, for those out there that are going, man, it's a drone. It's not a drone. 80,000 feet down a sea level and back up. Also, Fravor said that the Tic Tac was sitting on uh, the surface of the ocean with another craft underneath it uh, creating a disturbance. Now, we need to really digest those words. Okay? Now, he also said that uh, the, the craft under the water was creating the disturbance, but the craft above was not creating any wind shear, you know, was not disturbing anything like a a helicopter would or a vertical takeoff and landing uh, like a Harrier or something like that would create on the surface of the ocean. All right. And then this Tic Tac came up, rose up. He was circling and it started to circle with him. Now that that's bizarre. And then uh, he went to cut across the circle and the craft at that point shot off. And he said it took about two seconds for it to disappear. Gone. Poof. That's, the, we, we, we need to really, really analyze what Dave Fravor saw through his own um, testimony, combining that with this footage. This is, it's absolutely extraordinary. I don't know what else to, uh, uh, how else to try to spin this. And for somebody to say, this is the thing, anybody out there that, that says that um, it's, a, it's a drone, this is some kind of known craft, it, it's clearly, Fravor says it wasn't. The uh, investigation that had been going on for a few days, they didn't know what they were looking at. And that's where we sit today. I think it's, it's it's extraordinary beyond words, and that's 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 my take on it. And it's not going to get any. It's not going to go backwards, right? It's not going to go backwards. We're only moving forward from here on out. This is fade to black. I'll see everybody tomorrow night on uh, on fader night. It's going to be a special night tonight. It's our last show of the year, but. John Rappaport's going to be here with his No More Fake Newsroom. We're going to be taking calls all night, but we are also going to have astrologer Jeff Harmon here. Not only to take your calls, but to take a look at 2018 predictions, astrology, and what we can expect. 
Fade to Black's executive producers, Rita Kamarian. Shows produced by Hilton J. Palm, Renee, Dennis, and Bob. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vitoa, Mark D. Kovar. Webmaster, Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldridge. Intro, Spaceboy. Spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. Syndication is KGRA, The Planet. This broadcast is owned and copyrighted 2017 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. I'll see everybody here tomorrow night, our last show of 2017. Until then, everybody be safe. Go Beckley Tepe.